now he's not. Uh, let's see here. Good, great. Okay, well, I guess that's not going to work, so we'll just have to call the other. <sighs> Christina, it's James. You need to go down and tell Jim that I need him to hang up on 9200 so I can yeah. call him on 9200. For some reason, we got disconnected, okay? Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. I'll You there, Jim? Yep. All right. Did you hang up on me, or did just the call just drop? Uh, I think it just dropped, because it was still running through. Okay. All righty. Did you already start the billboard and the commercials? Yep. All right. We'll take it. Just patch me through, and then uh, once you get the bumper music, then I'll know we're back ready to go. Okay? Sounds good. Thank you. And a very good evening, hockey fans, and welcome to the Exchange Arena in Little Falls, where tonight it is Boys High School Hockey Section 6A as the Little Falls Flyers with a record of 5-1-1 one, one, take on the Prairie Center North Stars with a record of 1-2. and two. Hello, everyone. James Hershey with you. Glad to be with once again for Flyer Hockey tonight here on Q92, also streaming online at fallsradio.com, our game engineer. Back in the studios is Jim, and joining me for the first time here in Little Falls in the 2019-20 season is Jamie Pettit. And Jamie, we saw a very good game on Saturday as the Flyers were able to knock off the Fergus Falls Otters 6-1. to one. Again, the Little Falls Flyers power play has been strong this season. They were 2-4 for four with the man advantage coming into tonight's game, 40%. Uh, Nick Stevens led the way for Little Falls. He had two goals and two assists for four points. Also scoring for the Flyers were Stevens' line mates, Buckaloo and Hirsch. Gunnar Gustafson added a power play goal, and Mason Doble scored his first goal of the season. Another nice effort from Dane Kucher, the uh, junior goaltender in the Little Falls Flyers net. He was 17 of 18. He got to a point after two periods where it was 5-1 Flyers, and it wasn't overly exciting in the third period. And from Little Falls' perspective, it didn't need to be. They had a 5-1 lead. They weren't being pressed by the Otters. They had a third period goal. They, jump, they come back to Little Falls late Saturday night with a 5-1-1 one, one overall record through seven games. They played six of those first seven games on the road. They're back home tonight against Section 6A's Prairie Center. And the North Stars on the other side have only played three games so far. An opening loss 11-2 to Northern Lakes. Came back with a win against Park Rapids and then an overtime loss to Detroit Lakes. We're going to get a chance to talk to Chad Werman about those games, but this team is losing a lot from last year. They were 18-8-1 were the Prairie Center North Stars. They we're in the play-in round of the Section 6A playoffs, beating Morris Benson in double overtime. They advanced to the quarterfinals, uh, losing to Sartell 8-2. But their top two scorers from last season, Brady Miller and Hunter Fletcher. Miller had 55 points. Hunter Fletcher with 44 points. Combined, those two had 60 goals. So 60 goals from Miller and Hunter Fletcher. They've graduated. The North Stars might have some trouble this season regaining that scoring touch. But goals 
I think will come from Eli Fletcher. Eli Fletcher is Hunter Fletcher's younger brother. Eli played for the North Stars last year as an eighth grader, and as an eighth grader had 21 points. He's leading the North Stars in scoring this year with five goals and an assist for six points. He has a tremendous shot. I remember watching him in Pee Wee's. The ability that he has to shoot the puck, he's accurate and he gets it on net. He was the Prairie Center North Star that warmed up goaltender Isaiah Defoe before the game, and he was just zipping those shots one right after another onto Defoe. Well, we'll get a chance to talk with uh, Chad Wormer. We'll do that right now. Here's that interview with the head coach of the Prairie Center North Stars. Welcome back to the pregame show. I'm now joined with the head hockey coach of the Prairie Center North Stars, that being Chad Werman. And, Chad, uh, I know you've been at the helm for a few years with the Prairie Center North Stars, and last year I think was the one of the best years that you've ever had, at least as the head coach. And, unfortunately, graduation happens. But let's talk about last year and how successful it was for your team. Well, yeah, I mean, we had a we had a great year last year. We set program records, you know, um, wins, 18 wins, and uh, we we had two senior boys who uh, now are the single season and the career scoring leaders graduate. Um, our goaltender last year is a senior this year, but he he set a bunch of records for save percentage and some of those things. So it was just an all out good year. We had seven seniors, all accounted, all attributed, and uh, all were part of our our group. So we're we're uh, we are working to fill their spaces. I know it sucks that graduation has to happen, but, uh, you know, there has to be positivity when a program does win 18 games. It gets, ex- I got to believe, excitement for the kids that are coming back for next year. Absolutely. Our kids have been working hard, and I think they know. You know, I mean, they know what we lost last year. You know, they're, they're smart kids, and they're playing hard, and they know that if they, uh, if they go out and they work and they, they play the systems, they, they know the systems can be successful. So I think that, you know, you get that convincing you know, you win 18 games, they sort of get convinced by that. Uh, but you also got to have some luck, and you got to have some guys who put, put pucks in that, too. We've talked about this in the past. Your program, I think, is made up of three school districts, Long Prairie, Browerville, and Sox Center. And, of course, when you have three different school districts and kids coming from all areas, it takes a little planning, doesn't it? Well, no doubt about it. And, actually, we've got Melrose in there, too. Right. Um, but no, no players from Melrose this year. But, uh, yeah, no doubt about it. You know, we left, we left Sox Center today. We stopped in Long Prairie. The Broward kids drove, Browerville kids drove down. We pick them all up there at the rink, and then off we go. And we practice most of the time in Sox Center. So, the, you know, the Browerville Long Prairie kids, um, you know, they, they get, on, get on that bus every day and come down that, that 20 miles and, and make that trip down for practice. But uh, they love it. You know, they're part of it. And, and the guys, I think, I think really like um, – the guys really learn to love that, that bus ride and the camaraderie that it brings with it. I was just going to say, sometimes uh, like road trips really bring a team together, and here it's just daily that's happening. Absolutely, and the fun part is, you know, these guys are playing, you know, they're playing each other in football, and they're on different teams. You know, they're playing each other in baseball, and it's just a big baseball area there, and they're on different teams. But in, in, in the wintertime, they're together, and, and uh, you know, it's just fun to see the friendships form and the lifelong bonds form between these kids from different schools. Um, through the hockey season your second road game of the season an opening loss to northern lakes you bounce back with a nice win against park rapids and then an overtime loss to detroit lakes uh, i guess your assessment of the first three games of the season well you know the northern lakes game uh you know things we got in there we just uh things didn't go our way you know what i mean uh, in sports that happens sometimes you get going and it just doesn't go your way and then the floodgates kind of opened up there and I, I don't think it's a 12 or 11 11 2 game by any means but but that's what it turned out to be, and we learned a lot from it. Came back against Park Rapids, played pretty well, and then kids really played hard against Detroit Lakes on, uh, on last Friday night, and, boy, we had them right down in the last uh, minute. They got us, I think, 50 seconds left in overtime. So, but the kids played really well. We were up 2 nothing in that game, and uh, um, they, got, they got one at the end of the second, one at the end of the third, and, and there it was. So, You're returning your goaltender, so that's a good thing, but is the big question mark this year who's going to score the goals? Yeah, I think I think consistency, you know, in that group. Uh, Eli Fletcher, I think, was the leading eighth grade scorer in the state last year with 22 goals, and I think he's got maybe four goals already in uh, or five goals in three games here. So he's he's going to be our leading goal scorer for sure. But we got to have some help from the other lines, and we got to have some kids help him out. What is this team built around this year? Well, I, you know, no doubt, I, I I always believe, and even in last year when we had a couple of high scoring guys, we got to we got to build from the back out. So uh, goaltending, we start with goaltending, we start with the defensive zone system, and then we try to pop some goals when we can. 
Um, we just got to get hungry around the net, and we're, we're not going to score a ton of uh, those pretty goals. We've got to work hard to, to score our goals and get in front of the net in the dirty areas. This is your first section game against uh, some section opponents coming up, and I guess Section 6A in the last couple of years, a runner-up and a state champion, so it's not an easy section. Uh, what are your comments, I guess, of this year's section? Well, I think it's awfully tough again. I mean, Cathedral wins the state. They come back with everybody, and uh, certainly Little Falls and Alexandria and Sartell always got deep programs. They're going to they're always be, be good. And then, uh, you know, we'll see what happens with uh, those guys in the middle there, Fergus and River Lakes and some of those. I, I, I don't know a lot about them with football going on with River Lakes late and everything else. And But, uh, you know, we, we, we know where we're at. We're, we're competing with some of those teams, and we're going we're gonna to try to do our best and, and uh, compete with those, those teams in our group. All right, let's get to the keys to the game. You take on the Flyers tonight. Just once a year you do that unless you get a chance to play in the playoffs. What do you guys need to do tonight to keep this game close and to have a chance to win? Well, we'll have to play good defensively, and that, that doesn't mean just uh, the goalie and the D-man. That, that means all our guys. You know, we'll have to back check. We know that Little Falls comes out hard. They play with intensity every time. That's one of the, the keys to their program that I'm, that I'm always uh, – Always want to recognize it for them, and, and we're trying to do the same things. We're trying to play hard. We're trying to get pucks deep and go after it and, uh, and see what happens. Chad, good luck tonight. Good luck the whole season long, and maybe we'll see you down the playoffs. Appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Once again, that is the head coach of the Prairie Center North Stars. That is Chad Worman. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back. We're going to talk with assistant coach Wesley Watashik. That up next here on Q92 and FallsRadio.com. Here we go. Interview with assistant coach Wesley Watashik in 3, 2, and 1. What? I said I'm nervous about this interview. Oh, why? Because he was talking awful loud. I brought up a subject with him, and he was kind of going on and on and on. Oh, well. I, if I had known that, I'd have, we'd have, I'd have backed him out or something. What were you think I was doing? Well, no, I knew what you were doing, but I knew enough to use gotcha. my golf course voice. I got you. I got you. It's all good. You're back there, Jim. Okay, everything's good. Um, so I'm assuming you'll have to send me an, a text on how much we've done so far for uh, commercials, but I see you sent me something here just a second ago, so... All right, we're listening this in. Hey, Jim, I can't hear the feed, so you want to send that to me? Thanks. You want to give me some boost? Because I can't hear that at all. Welcome to the pregame show, and once again, it's time for our coach's interview brought to you by Hilmerson Collision Center in Little Falls. Joining me now for the first time is assistant coach Wesley Watashik. And Wesley, I haven't had a chance to talk with you on the air yet. Off the air, I've had a chance to a few times, but let's talk about this hockey team coming into this year. And I guess, what were some of the goals and expectations that you had had of these kids this year? I think the expectations are kind of high for myself. Um, Getting to the MAC is ultimately the goal. Being the final four in our section, uh, getting a chance to play for that section final. I think we got a good core of, uh, I would say, older guys now, being that they're juniors, that could help lead us to that that end possibility of you know playing for a section championship. So far, seven games in, five wins, one loss, one tie. I know you and I and Mike Coral sat in an office here a couple weeks ago before the season started, and we kind of said, well, it could go either way on how uh, the season starts out, and I'd have to say it's probably the best scenario almost is how it has happened in the first seven games. Do you think that's about the same too? Yeah, I would agree. Like we said earlier, we could have been 0-5. I said the first five games were crucial. We could have been 5-0 and or 0-5. 
Um, but we had a, we've had a good showing. Kids have worked hard, um, done it, pretty much everything we've asked them to do. Uh, we've been a little undisciplined getting in the penalty box, a little too often. Uh, I think that's what's hurting us a little bit. But, uh, yeah, so far through the first seven games, I've, I've been pretty happy. You're just under six goals a game, 40 goals in the first seven games. Are you surprised by the output? Because last year that was a struggle of this team. Yeah, that was one of the things we talked about as a coaching staff. How are we going to get these guys to score some goals? Because last year we struggled with that. And, uh, yeah, we are actually pretty – I'm pretty surprised. And, again, it's we've been trying to preach to the kids to get the puck to the dirty areas of the rink where you're going to get hit, you're going to get slashed, and that's where you're going to score goals. Uh, every high school goalie is good enough to stop a puck outside the dots, but if you get inside the dots, that's where uh, that's where you become dangerous. You mentioned high school goalie Dane Kucher, a great goaltender. He's already had a good beginning season here, only 11 goals given up in the first seven games, so under two goals a game. And that's if you can get under two goals a game and score three, four, five goals, you're going to win most of your games, aren't you? Yeah, Dane's a great asset for us to have. Uh, he sees the puck very well. He can stop pretty much anything. And, you know, a lot of times he'll make the save you don't expect him to make, and then he'll give up one. You're like, whoa, what happened there, Dane? But, uh, yeah, he's a great asset to have, and, you know, with us scoring goals, it helps. Like you said, if he doesn't give up anything and we score a couple, we're all right. You know, we can compete with these with the better schools of Alexandria and Sartell and Cathedral and those bigger dogs because now we got we got a goalie that can that stop a puck a little bit. Kind of like when you get, were a senior, your senior year, sometimes offense was your best defense, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. It never hurts to score more goals than the other team. You know, if, if you can just out, if you can win in a shootout, you win in a shootout because you don't need a goalie at that point. Luckily, we had a good goalie as well, so that helped us too. But, um, yeah, sometimes scoring goals helps you more than having a good goalie because at some point you're going to have a bad night or bounce, bounce might not go your way, so. One question was going to be, you had a lot of young guys kind of stepping into some roles, and so far this year, those young guys have really done a nice job filling into those roles. Yeah, I, th- I think you got to give credit to our, our youth program a little bit, developing some of these kids. Um, but yeah, we you know we took on a lot of young kids, a lot of numbers, you know, which is good for our high school program, um, and they've done a great job stepping in, filling the roles that we need. And I think I think they understand the game needs to be simple and it can't be complex. And if you keep it simple, anybody can kind of do that job. All right, you mentioned one thing about penalties, and we saw that once again in the game on Saturday against Fergus Falls, a 6-1 win. Uh, let's talk about the Fergus Falls game a little bit more in depth because that was really the first section team that maybe is going to give you a challenge. And for the most part, you held them at bay. Yeah, I thought I thought we overall dominated that game. Again, it just there's aspects of the game that we, we lack. We, just, we didn't move the puck as well as I would have liked us to do it. Um, you know, but... It's still early in the year. We're we're still trying to iron out some wrinkles, but uh, Fergus has a good squad. Um, you know, they got the top lines competitive with everybody else, and I think after that they kind of lose depth, and that's kind of where we took over. Is we have you know three solid lines that can come out, and we can play with anybody, and 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 we'll we'll show that. So. Your one loss of the year was here at home against Alexandria, and uh, unfortunately in that game you took eight penalties, and that might have been part of the difference why you lost. Yeah, I, I would probably say that is part of it. I think they scored two power play goals, and you know we had a we had a goal that was called off on a penalty, you know to to, ch- to change that game. It goes from one one to two one or two nothing. I think maybe even at that point, um, you know. So those are those are big momentum changes in a game. And when you give up a power play goal or get a power play goal, you know special teams is very integral to this game, and and, um, and I think that is one of the reasons we lost. Alexandria is a good team. You know, but I, I thought we played very well, and we, we kind of managed the storm that they brought. And, and uh, yeah, if we stay out of the box, I think it's a different end result. It might be even closer than 3-1. 5-0-1 on the road to start the season. You're 0-1 at home, uh, and that obviously could change tonight against Prairie Center. But to have no losses on the road in your first six games, that's impressive. Yeah, I'm actually very surprised. Uh, you know, the, the thief tie helps big time. Um, but yeah, being five and zero on the road, a lot of a lot of teams struggle on the road. You're on a bus, you know, especially our first trips are long trips up to Virginia, up to I Falls, Thief, Crookston. So those are long bus rides. Kids are sitting on a bus, and you get kind of get the legs. Yeah, Fergus Falls, and you know, I, I was impressed. We've we've came out with energy in every game. We haven't really had to get on the boys about going, um, which is which is a big change from last year. Because you know, the last couple of years we've struggled. Just the first period, it's like we're we're still asleep. We're still waiting on. We're getting out of school still, and. Uh, we've started off hot, and I, I, I think it's a trend that's going to continue. One thing I mentioned with head coach Tony Kuchar in the Otter win is uh, obviously 40 goals were scored, 
team's confident. Is there a little overconfidence, or do you think this team is cautiously confident? I I, th- I think that's a good question. I think, and I think we as coaches have to make sure they don't get overconfident. Um, you know, you you see these let's play hockey rankings and Minnesota Hockey Hub, all that stuff, and I I kind of hate being even on the sheet. You know, I don't even, I don't I could care less if that never comes out at at all. And these kids look at it, you know, social media and Twitter and all these things are huge now. So these kids are looking at it all day long. So as soon as we crack the top twenty, there's kids talking about, oh, do you see we're fourteen and. And we, Kucher and I made a point to say, hey, like, you guys haven't proved anything. You know, this is early. You know, who cares about what that paper says? Because now you got a target on your back. You know, people want to beat the number 12 team in the state or the 14-ranked team in the state. So as soon as you get that number next to your name, now, now everybody's going, well, if we beat them, you know, we might, we might get on that sheet. So it's, it's a double-edged sword. And I, I think as coaches, we're, doing, we're trying to control the egos and make sure that we're not, we're not getting too high. Well, you obviously 10, 11 years ago were a number one ranked team in the state, <laughs> you know, going 30 and 0 at one point, and head coach Tony Kucha had to reel you in a little bit. Are you are you seeing that same thing too? And now you being a coach, remembering that? Yeah, definitely. You know, like these these kids have the capability of being as competitive as the group that I played on was. Um, you know, they they don't have probably the high end talent that we had with Hanowski and Fessler and those guys, um, but. This group is good enough to to accomplish those goals and to reach reach some aspects of that of that same team that I played on. And uh, yeah, you you kind of think back to well, what did Tony say when I was playing, or you know how do we handle this situation as a player so I can help these guys a little bit? Because I've I've been in this spot, I understand the game a little differently, um, you know, than some others that would that would be in our position. So so I've been just trying to help, and you you do what you can. And again, these are all high school kids and. You never know what they're thinking about. If it's hockey, their girlfriend, or school, or there's so much going on in that brain. You weren't thinking about girlfriends, were you? Uh, I probably was. <laughs> nice. Let's get to the keys to the game tonight. Uh, first of three games at home, so you get a little home cooking here this week. Prairie Center tonight, St. Paul Johnson, a tough game on Friday, and then Mount West Tonga, another tough game on Saturday. But tonight's game, Prairie Center, another section game, important to get that win. What are the keys tonight for the Flyers to continue their winning ways? No, first of all, we got to stay out of the penalty box. You know, any like I said, special teams is key. If, if you can stay out of the box, I think we'll be all right. Uh, we got to get pucks to the net, get a lot of shots. Um, I don't know who who their goalie is, um, you know, but we we just got to get pucks to the net and keep and keep banging in rebounds. And if we put up a couple goals tonight, I think we'll be okay. All right, coach. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you. Once again, that's the assistant coach of the Little Falls Flyers. That is Wesley Witashik. Our coach's interview has been brought to you by Hilmerson Collision Center in Little Falls. When we come back, Jamie Pettit will have the starting goaltenders getting closer to face-off. Prairie Center, Little Falls, up next on Q92 and fallsradio.com. Parents have a big influence on their teen's decision not to use alcohol. According to a recent survey, Little Falls teens who said their parents would feel it was wrong for them to drink alcohol are almost nine times less likely to drink. This is good news, parents. Keep talking with your teens about family rules and consequences surrounding underage drinking. Let them know that underage drinking is not okay with you. Talk early, talk often. This is Deborah Yulini Allen from Little Falls. On behalf of Stand Up For You Coalition and CHI, St. Gabriel's house. After an accident, it's nice to know where to go. Peterson Body Shop has loaner cars, a lifetime guarantee on workmanship and paint. They work with all insurance companies and repair all makes of vehicles. Remember, it's your insurance, your vehicle, so get the repairs done where you want. Peterson Body Shop is known for quality work in the Little Falls area since 1963. Give them a call at 632-6156. Peterson Body Shop, Highway 27 West, Little Falls. Your best decision after a collision. Just ask your neighbors. Let Mid-Minnesota Federal Credit Union take some of the pressure off your pocketbook this giving season with a holiday cash loan. Holiday Cash gives you a more generous spending budget with rates as low as 4.99% APR and a budget-friendly payment plan. Now through December 24th, call, stop by any of our locations, or go online to mmfcu.org for more information or to apply today. Mid-Minnesota Federal Credit Union. We're with you all the way. I'm subject to credit approval, certain restrictions apply. When you need your garbage removed, call Bob Lemire Roll-Off and Refuse in Little Falls. Locally owned and operated, Bob Lemire Roll-Off and Refuse is ready to pick up your garbage and save you money. No administrative fees, no contracts. They offer both commercial and residential service. Whether you need a roll-off, dumpster, or can, call them today at 320-632-5212. That's 632-5212. Bob, the mere roll-off, and refuge in Little Falls. 
living and working with you in your community. All right, hockey fans, welcome back to the Exchange Arena. Just a few minutes away from the face-off, Prairie Center and Little Falls. And with a look at the starting goaltenders, here's Jamie Pettit. The Prairie Center North Stars, they were 18-8-1 last season. They lost in the Section 6A quarterfinals to Sartell. This season, they're 1-2, and two, a win against Park Rapids, a loss to Northern Lakes, and an overtime loss to Detroit Lakes. Starting in goals, the senior, number one, Isaiah Defoe. He's played 154 minutes. He's got a one and two overall record with a 4.6 goals against average. Save percentage of 84.8%. Number one, senior goaltender Isaiah Defoe for the Prairie Center North Stars. For the five, one and one Little Falls Flyers, the Flyers started the season with six of their first seven games on the road. This is only their second home game of the season. Their starting goaltender, no surprise, the junior, number 35, Dane Kucher. As a sophomore, Kucher was the team MVP. He's got team MVP-like statistics so far this season. A 1.5 goals against average, a save percentage of 91.5%, and he has two shutouts. On Saturday night in the 6-1 win over the Fergus Falls Otters, Kucher was 17 of 18, and that goal that Fergus Falls scored was about two and a half minutes into the first period, and Kucher shut the door the rest of the way. All right, let's get the starting lineup for the Flyers here as we go down below. 35, Dane Kucher. Junior defenseman, number seven, Joe Majerly. Senior defenseman, number 29, Reese Hubbard. Junior forward, number nine, Gabe Hirsch. Junior forward, number 33, Nicholas Stevens. And number four, senior forward, Ryan Buckaloo. Coaches. Let's look at the starting lineup for the Flyers. And we are about ready to drop the puck in two minutes when we come back from this break. Little Falls, Prairie Center, up next on Q92 and streaming online at fallsradio.com. Fleet Supply, true value in Little Falls is a proud supporter of Flyer Sports. Fleet Supply has everything you need for all your outdoor and indoor projects. They have a great selection of tools, kitchen, bed, and paint supplies, footwear, hunting supplies, and so much more. Also check out their great monthly bargains. Visit tons of in-store savings. Fleet Supply, true value. Your car doesn't look like it should after an accident. It's nice to know where to go. In Little Falls, Peterson Body Shop is known for their quality workmanship and reputation for reasonable rates. From body repairs to glass installation to loaner cars when work is being performed, Peterson Body Shop has been bringing quality service in the Little Falls area since 1963. Give them a call at 632-6156. Peterson Body Shop, Highway 27 West, Little Falls. Your best decision after a collision. Just ask your neighbors. All right, hockey fans, welcome back once again here to the Exchange Arena in Little Falls. Section 6A Hockey tonight on Q92. Also streaming online at fallsradio.com and also for our viewers at home tonight on Channel 181 and also on YouTube. 
As we always do a custom before the start of a game, Jamie Pettit gives us our final thoughts. The North Stars and Flyers have played 24 times. Little Falls is 23 and one against Prairie Center. The only win for Prairie Center against Little Falls, January 9th, 2014, a 5-2 North Star win over Little Falls. Last season, it was a 6-4 win for Little Falls in Long Prairie, but in that game, the Flyers trailed 4-2 in the second period before scoring four unanswered. And we had a little fun with Chad Weirman, head coach of Prairie Center before the game. We told him after that game that the two broadcasters that night for the Little Falls Flyers, James Hershey and Jamie Pettit, got locked in the building after the game was over. But we did get out, so that was good, right? At least some people thought it was good. Yes. The puck is down or underway, just like that shot, and a goal, and I don't know if it was tipped in front, but the original shot came from Reese Hubbard, and I think Reese is saying that was all the way his goal. And just 15 seconds into the game, the Flyers have taken a 1-0 lead. And if Reese Hubbard does get credit for the goal, it'll be his third of the season. It seemed like it hit something in front. If it wasn't a Flyer, it had to have won off a North Star. 15 seconds in, it's 1-0 Little Falls. So we'll wait and see what the official scoring is, but the way Reese was heading over to the bench, it looked like he was the one that scored the goal. Flyers, number 29, Reese Hubbard with an assist from number nine, Gabe Hirsch. So Hirsch will get the assist, Hubbard gets the goal, and for Reese Hubbard, it's his third of the season. Reese had no goals coming in to his senior year. He's got three goals now here in the last three games. And check that, four games. Played at center ice now. It'll be Buckaloo coming across the line. one nothing lead for the Flyers. Down low here to Hirsch, trying to give it back to Buckaloo. It's intercepted here by the North Stars, and they will play it out to center ice. Picked back up by the goal scorer, Hubbard. He'll throw it over to Majerly on the left wing. Majerly tries to get it up to the line. Struggles the first time, picks it up again in his own circle. He'll throw it off the short glass, try to get it out to center ice, unable to do so. As it's held in there that time by Imdek, as he'll play it down deep behind the netminder, Dane Kuchar. Dane Kuchar to my left, and Isaiah Defoe to my right. As we played a minute, 20 seconds into the first period, the Flyers have a 1-0 lead on the goal scored by Reese Hubbard. Flyers will dump it back down into the North Star end. Stars trying to pinch it up along the boards on the end wall. And who's going to pick up the loose puck? It's at least going to be touched briefly there by the North Stars. This is Gould with it. Ian Gould trying to clear it out to center. Nearly came loose in the left circle. Gustafson was there. Trying to hold the point on the left side as Colton Johnson gets it now to Hayden Johnson. Hayden trying to get a shot off there but never was able to. And it's played back out to center eyes. Colton Johnson quickly over to Moore. Moore comes across the blue line. Moore coming through the paint. Now goes to the right wing side. This is Gustafson with a shot. That oh. one just trickled wide as it started to bounce right in the blue paint and finally comes out to center ice. Gould with it. He'll pass it over to the right wing side. It was a briefly touched there that time by Brady Swanson and it's played back out to neutral ice here and George Moore has it. 14.45 to go in the first. one nothing Little Falls leads. And we get a whistle, a stoppage of play, an offside call, and check those line charts, Jamie. And for the Little Falls Flyers, no change to the first line. Buckaloo, center, Stevens, and Hirsch. But lines two and three, slightly different. It's Gustafson between Philippi and the sophomore Hayden Johnson. Third line has Bjorgi with Doble on the left and Robbie Kaczynski-Helgeson on the right. Defensively, the Flyers will go six deep. Hubbard, Majerly, Inez, Moore, Morrison, and the freshman Colton Johnson. Of course, Dane Kuchar, the starting goaltender. But Hayden Johnson up on line two. Robbie Kaczynski Helgeson down on line three. Face off one by Bjorgi. Quick shot taken there by Mason Doble, who got his first goal of the season on Saturday against Fergus Falls. Played along the line as his pass that was Tower Morrison over to Doble. His quick shot there is sticked out by Defoe. Into the safety netting, we get a whistle and a stoppage of play with 14.23 to go in the first. Flyers lead 1-0. We heard from assistant coach Wesley Waitashik before tonight's game. You did the pregame interview with him, and he said he's been happy with the Flyers and a quick first period start. This year in seven games, they outscored their opponents 16-5, and with the first period goal tonight, it's 17-5 in period one. Had a chance to talk with Wesley because head coach Tony Kucher was uh, officiating the game prior to this one. There was no junior varsity for 
Prairie Center. So what they decided to do is take the JV team and the Bantam B team, split them up and play a little game before. So at least those players got an opportunity to play. So Tony Kuchar was uh, the official. I don't know if there was any penalties or anything well, going on in that you game. You know what, I think he did a pretty decent job. And when he came off the ice, he didn't seem like he was winded either. No, not Must really. Must be in pretty good shape still. I think he was looking for a hot dog, I think. So. <laughs> yeah, he said, he asked if I had gotten a hot dog. And I said no, so I had to scramble back to get one. First opportunity on the scoring attack that time by the Stars. That was Bick that just sent it wide. Now getting a shot on net. Save made there by Kuchar. Now it's Gould moving in, tries to get it down low. It's ticked away there, and still Gould has it at the left circle. Gets it back to the high slot. The shot was taken there by Dieters. That hit traffic in front, and here comes the goal scorer, Hubbard, out to center ice. Flyers lead 1-0, 13-20. Right over to Hirsch, shot there. Glove save made by Defoe. Looked like that shot from Gabe Hirsch might have gone wide, but still, Defoe did get over there and make the save. Good pass across. Buckingham became a decoy. Hirsch caught up to it, took the shot, and Defoe made the save. Eli Fletcher's the left wing on the North Stars' first line. As a eighth grader last year, he had 30 points, 21 goals, and nine assists. Tonight, he's already drawn quite a bit of attention, attention from the Little Falls Flyers. He's their leading scorer now as a ninth grader, and he can put the puck in the net. He's dangerous. Yeah, he was probably one of the, if not the top scorer for eighth graders last year in the state. Here's of course, Buckaloo. Little Falls had Philippi last That's right, Buckaloo coming across, fires a shot high, save made there by Defoe. Back to the high slot now, this is Hubbard, he'll slide it down low. Stevens, he had two goals in that Fergus Falls win on Saturday. Two goals, two assists for him. He'll leave it back in the corner. Buckaloo with a shot, that one just goes wide. Back to the point now, here's Hubbard. Thought about winding up, gets it over to Majority. Majority will play it in the corner. Touch there by Gabe Hirsch. We're going to chat with Gabe Hirsch in intermission number one. He'll be our player profile for tonight, our lone one of the night. In the corner now, this is the North Stars trying to clear it out to the line, but not even close. There's a good job there by Stevens to push it in deeper. Hirsch racing after it, trying to get there first is Zolman. Zolman will play it to the line, and out to center ice it comes. Picked up by Hubbard. Hubbard now over to Maturley, gives it up there briefly there to Klein, but Brady Klein wasn't able to get that to the forehand. And back the other way come the Flyers now at their own blue line, struggling to get it out a little bit here. 11.50 to go in the first. Still 1-0 Little Falls. Majerly passes over to the left side to Hubbard. Still at their own blue line. Now Majerly again. Fine will flip it up to center ice. This is Gunnar Gustafson. He'll fill in now. Comes across the blue line. The Stars line goes upper shelf there. That one wide. And it'll carry him all the way back out to center ice. Where it'll be picked up by Colton Johnson. Johnson gets it over to Philippi. Over skating at that time was Philippi. Now it'll be Colton Johnson moving in ahead again. Johnson still gets it back then at center ice there. Puck was taken away there by Fletcher. And then it's intercepted here. And now it's picked up here by the North Stars. Back the other way now come the Stars. Coming across the line briefly there. That was uh, Polipnik. And he lost the puck there. And the Flyers back in George Moore in their own end. Moore gets it over to Philippi. Rink wide pass. That one just... Skips off a stick there and out to center ice. Back to the flyer line it comes once again. This is Gustafson picking up the loose puck. 10.50 to go here in the first. Still 1-0 is our lead. Flyers lead on that Reese Hubbard goal is third of the season. Coming across the line now. This is Hayden Johnson. Johnson behind the net. Johnson bumped off the puck that time by Gould. And the North Stars have it, but then they lose it in the defensive zone as it was briefly touched there that time by Hirsch, intercepted now here by the North Stars and played out to center ice. And it'll be quickly fired in there on net and Kuchar has to make the save. It's the shooting ability of Fletcher right from center ice, rifled it on Kuchar. Back to the point now to Gould, shot towards the net and that goes off the back wall. Kiram's out to Colton Johnson. Moved ahead here now by Kaczynski Halgeson who gets it over to George Moore. Moore moves it ahead and the Got behind, it was Hubbard, the defense, but has to catch up to the puck. Hubbard now has it on the end wall. He'll play it around on the near side. Hubbard now with it. Hubbard will pass it off here to Inez. Shot there, and that hit off the toe of Bick. Karam's in the back. Now a quick chance in front there, down low that time, was Bjorgi, unable to get the shot on net. Held in by Inez. Right now back to Bjorgi on the right half wall. Filling in over there is Mason Doble. Doble gets it now to Inez. Inez now over to Morrison. 
Tower Morrison with a low shot tipped in front there by Bjorgi, and that one goes wide. Bjorgi retreats here, actually gathers it up in the corner, plays it back to the right point. Touched here by Inez. Inez floats it forward. That was tipped in front by Bjorgi, and he scores! What a tip by Nolan Bjorgi, and a good opportunity there for the Flyers, and they were able to capitalize. And I think the one thing there is the Stars are starting to buzz around in their own net, getting tired a little bit on their end. And that goal scored by Bjorgi is second of the year. Nice tip in front. That's just like you'd execute a drill in practice. Shot came from the right point. Bjorgi kind of knocked it down, tipped it past Defoe in the North Stars net, giving Little Falls a 2-0 lead. Second of the season for the captain, Nolan Falls, Bjorgi. Number six, Nolan Bjorgi with an assist to number 14, Marshall Inez. So Inez gets the assist, Bjorgi the goal, and then another opportunity for the Flyers as Defoe has to cover up. And the faceoff will go down into the North Star end, but two early goals here for the Flyers, and they lead 2-0 with 9-12 to go in the first. A good controlled shot from just inside the blue line. It gave Bjorgi the opportunity to tip it. He took full advantage, got it past Defoe, and the North Stars are in a 2-0 hole. Tchaikovsky now out there, the uh, fourth line out there, Hudson Phillippe and Carter Othout out there right now. Getting an opportunity to get some action here. Trying to go all four lines. And here's Othout with a backhanded attempt, looking for a second goal of the season. The eighth grader out there. Now he gets pasted to the wall. Back to the point, it comes to Majerly. Shot on net, save made there by Defoe. Juicy rebound comes out. And Tchaikovsky has it at neutral ice, will play it in. Well, he's it looked like Hubbard might have touched that offside, but they let it go. Hubbard now does pick up the loose puck, then he overskates it. This is Carter Othout putting it over now to Hubbard, who plays it back to Majerly, and they want to regroup. Othout will come out, and Buckaloo comes back on to complete the change in that first line out there with Hirsch, Buckaloo, and Stevens. Puck dangerously comes in front of the netminder Defoe and played back out to center ice. 2 nothing Flyers lead. Shots 9-1 to in favor of the Flyers with 8.07 to go here in the first. Stevens slides over Majerly. Majerly going to the glove side, and Defoe makes the save and holds on. Hubbard zipped it up ahead to Stevens. Stevens got it across to Majerly. Majerly just marched right in, took a shot save made by Defoe. That first defensive pair for the Little Falls Flyers, the senior Reese Hubbard, the junior Joel Majerly, they've been solid through seven plus games. That they have. Here's Inez with a quick shot. That one goes wide. He was on the end of uh, the start of the play for that goal scored by Bjorgi as he took the shot. So he's got an assist for Marshall, his third of the season. Played behind now, this is Stevens. Plays it back out to Inez. Inez walks it in, fires a shot. That hit traffic in front. That was looking upper shelf. And it just hit something there. Now, Buckaloo with a whack at it. And it's played back out to center ice. Morrison picks it up, gives it over to his defensive partner, Inez. Quickly up here now to Hirsch. Hirsch has passed too strong there for Buckaloo. Ryan Buckaloo picks up the loose puck, plays it now deep into the North Star end. 7.15 to go in the first. Little Falls, two. Prairie Center, nothing. Here's Inez with a shot on net. And a save made there by Defoe. He's seen a lot of rubber his way here in the opening 10 minutes. 11 shots, nine saves for Isaiah Defoe. Out at center ice, coming in now. Right wing side, this is Gabe Hirsch. Hirsch, good strong move there by him. Stays on his feet, goes behind the netminder Defoe. Gets some help there from Gustafson, passes it out to Philippi, and somehow it sneaks in, and it's 3-0 Flyers. Gabe Hirsch may have got a piece of it. The shot was taken low slot by Matt Philippi. I think Gabe Hirsch may have got some of that puck before it got past Defoe, giving Little Falls a 3-0 lead. Good pressure from the Flyers in the offensive zone. It results in another goal. And why wouldn't it be Gabe Hirsch? We're going to talk to him here in intermission number one. So it's a little it's, premature, isn't it's it? Been Aren't they supposed to score after we play the interview? Well, I know. Well, maybe he'll score afterwards, too. I guess we'll find out, right? Let's go down below and get the uh, score here. Who scored that? But I think it was Hirsch. Well, it's number nine, Gabe Hirsch, with an assist to number 15, Gunnar Gustafson, and number 27, Matt Phillippe. So Gustafson and Phillippe get the assist. The goal scored by Hirsch, and for Hirsch on the season is sixth of the year, 19th in his career for the junior, which obviously started as a freshman, so in his third year at the varsity level. 3-0, Flyers lead. 12-1 are the shots, and 3-0 is the score. Little Falls 
in an early command of this game with still 6-10 to go in period number one. Aiden Johnson now, nice slide out to center to Philippi right on his tape. Philippi comes across the blue line. Philippi left side, wrist shot by Philippi, and that one just goes wide. Played back in the corner once again. Racing after it is Hayden Johnson getting their first of the stars. They'll try to clear it out to center ice. It's uh, in the jersey there of Reese Hubbard. And Hubbard now passes it over to an open man. That was Kaczynski Halgus into the forehand shot there by Bjorgi. And the save is made. Now another opportunity by Kaczynski Halgus down low trying to knock it in. Said it'll be back to the point now majorly. Majorly shot on net. Defoe just got the left pad out just in time. Kept it low. Made the save. Majorly able to keep it in. Plays it into the corner. North Stars played around, but Kaczynski Halgus in first to get there. The Flyers right now are a full step ahead of this uh, North Star team. Here's a chance behind, and that one nearly went behind the netminder Defoe as it ricocheted off him on the side and comes back out to center. Quickly moving it up here. Here comes Bjorgi. He'll drop pass it there, shot there by Kaczynski Helgeson, and then it was tipped in front there by Doble into the corner. Played around the boards, not out of the zone yet. Now Hubbard over to Maturley, shot on net, hit traffic in front. And Kaczynski Halgeson unable to get to it. Doble will go back now at center ice and pick up the loose puck back in his own end. Gives it to Majorly. They quickly move it ahead. This will hit off the low ceiling here as it goes off the stick of the senior, Nolan Biorgi. With 4.39 to go in the first, 3-0 Little Falls. Hubbard, Biorgi, and Hirsch have scored for the Little Falls Flyers. Shots favor the Flyers, 14-1. I love the scoreboard in the west oh, yeah, end of the rink. Say, you New seen that yet. scoreboard in the west end of the rink. It's great. I didn't even know what the shots on goal were because I didn't need to look to my left to see the scoreboard, time remaining, score of the game, because we've got a scoreboard above the North Stars net. Got a delayed offside here. That'll give the Flyers an opportunity to get it out to center ice. Yeah, this is your first time here this year. I forgot about that. I was that. here for the scrimmage. Well, yeah, that's true. I didn't see you, though. You, you, no, I had you, left you, you, you came for the early shift. I came for the early shift. Yeah, you came for the early morning skate. The early morning I skate. I didn't roll in until noon. Yeah, you, you came in later. Yeah. It's okay. I came in before I had to. Uh, here's an opportunity. goes wide. What was that? That uh, second week of November, when was that? I'm trying to remember when that was. Yeah, the... Weekend of Veterans Day. Veterans Day was on a Monday. Okay. That, that was, yeah, I was getting ready to go over to Alexandria to do the Pioneer football game with Perm. That's what it was. See, I'm getting old, but I still remember some things. Yes, once in a while. 3.57 to go here in the first. 3 nothing is our score. Flyers lead. Buckaloo line out there now. He easily wins the draw. Right back to a quick shot there by Colton Johnson, and Defoe has to make another save. Still trying to clear it out of the zone of the North Stars there. Swanson had it briefly. Now it's Hirsch with it. Centered it out. It's in the blue paint. And we get a whistle and a stoppage of play here. And I think the net has come dislodged. Yeah, fortunately for Prairie Center, there was more pressure for the Little Falls Flyers. And the net came off back behind to full. Just one shot on goal for Prairie Center. And that was the shot that Eli Fletcher took from the center red line. And Kutcher had to make a, you know, a pretty decent save on it because it was a good shot from Fletcher. But other than that, limited, limited time for Prairie Center in the offensive zone. Gabe Hirsch, quick shot on net, save, rebound there, and tried to poke it in, and uh, Defoe was able to cover it up on that 17th shot already as he's got a total of 14 saves on 17 shots and a 3-0 lead for the Flyers. 3.35 to go. Flyers win the draw again. Here's Stevens trying to wrap around. And actually got stopped there by the post. And then it finally be Defoe that will cover up. Stevens was our Pizza Ranch player of the game in the 6-1 win over Fergus Falls on Saturday night. He had two goals and two assists. In th three times this year, Stevens has had a four-point night. Four-point night three times for the junior Nick Stevens. Coming in is one of the top scorers here for the Flyers. As he has 15 points, I think it, if I saw your section report, he's actually tied for the top, correct on that? It's tied with Jack Smith yeah. from St. Cloud Cathedral. So is Gustafson. You got Smith, Gunnar Gustafson, and Nick Stevens. I know when I looked at your report, I was like, wow, there's like four flyers in the scoring column. And well, the they played seven games. I understand helps. that, but still. Here's Gustafson back in him, trying to slide it through the wickets there to throw in a nice job by Isaiah to make the save. 
Gustafson now. We've definitely watched him uh, really mature and blossom here in his second year at the varsity level. Yeah, we talked about it Saturday night, his ability to win faceoffs, especially in the offensive zone. Here's Maturley with a shot. That one's tipped, tipped away there by the tucked in jersey by Fletcher. He's trying to be, I guess, you know, hide his identity there with the number, right? Whatever works. Out to center as it comes. Right wing side trying to slide across there that time was Preston Sorensen. That first line for the North Stars and Fletcher, Bick, and Sorensen, if you add all three of their career scores up, they're just a little over 100 points. So, I mean, they're a pretty good line. Yep, two seniors, Bick and Sorensen. Of course, Eli Fletcher is the freshman. Let's see if I could do quick math here. They'd have 107 points so far, all three of them combined, coming into today's game career-wise. So when you get uh, something like that, you know you got to watch out for these guys, and they can strike at any time. It's just that Little Falls has controlled most of the play to our right here in the opening 14 and change. Down to 2.20 to go here in the first. 3-0 Flyers lead. Defoe going to leave it back there for the defense. And the North Stars will flip it to the line, but knocked down once again by Inez. And just out to center it comes before Tower Morrison can get it. Morrison will dump it in. Played back out to neutral. Inez picks it up, plays it away there that time from the charging Hoffman. And then we get a whistle and a stop to play. A minute 57 to go in the first. 3-0 our score. We'll talk with Gabe Hirsch. Coming up in intermission number one. Hubbard, Bjorgi, and Hirsch have scored for the Little Falls Flyers. Flyers scored just 15 seconds into the first period. Saturday night, it took 16 seconds for the Flyers to get their first goal from the stick of Buckaloo. They went on to a 6-1 win. So very quick, efficient starts for Little Falls. Well, even in the loss here against Alexandria, they scored first. The Flyers did in the opening couple minutes of that game. And of course, all the goals were scored in the first period. And this is only the second game of the season for the Flyers. They're 0-1 at home, as we talked about in the pregame, 5-0-1 on the road. And, hey, if you can go 5-0-1 on the road, that's a phenomenal record. Now just work on some of your home games here, and they'll have three of them this week after today. Johnson on Friday, Mount Westonka on Saturday. And the Mount Westonka and Johnson games are going to be more challenging than and not nothing taking anything away from Prairie Center, taking anything from Fergus Falls and Wadena, but these teams right now are kind of in a rebuilding mode right now, and Johnson's coming in at a very high clip right now, and Mount Westonka has also got a lot of talent coming back. St. Paul Johnson's undefeated going into tonight's game with River Falls, and Mount Westonka's 5-2. and two. Flyers had a road trip at St. Paul Johnson and Mount Westonka last season, and they got swept. Yeah, we were there for both of them. Quick shot on net, save me. That was George Moore with the shot on the doorstep. There was Gabe Hirsch with 101 to go here in the first. Three nothing Flyers lead. You got some Christmas shopping done on that trip last year. I did. We I went did. to Ridgedale. Yeah. Yep. With the had to buy a trailer to get everything home. <laughs> Well, you, your, your, your vehicle is very uh, spacious. spacious. No, yeah, it's kind of nice spacious. And you, it's not like you're using your back seat for passengers or anything. So. Not too often. Yeah, so it's all good. I charge for that. Yeah. yeah. No, I didn't see any baby carriers or anything in the back. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm, an Uber, I'm an Uber driver on my off time. You're an Uber driver. What's your rating, by the way? <laughs> not too good. There's a quick shot by Majorly. Save is made. Rebound there by Gustafson, and he scores. And it's 4-0 Flyers with 38.5 seconds to go here in the first. And Gunnar Gustafson picking up the loose change and has his seventh of the year. Nice rebound goal for Gunnar Gustafson. 16-21 of the first period. And for Gunnar Gustafson, his team leading seventh goal of the year. Another scoring chance for Little Falls that starts from a good play at the blue line. Little Falls, number 15, Gunnar Gustafson with an assist to number seven, Joe Majerly. Gustafson. So Majerly gets the assist, Gustafson the goal, and it's now 4 0. Still 25 seconds left to go. 23 shots already on the board to just three for the Prairie Center North Stars and a 4 0 lead. Here's another quick shot. Defoe makes the save and holds on as that was Carter Othout looking for his second goal of the season. Late in the first period with Little Falls up four to nothing. This is the fourth line, the junior Jake Chakowski, eighth grader Carter Othout and the freshman Hudson Phillippe. 
North Stars tangled up in their own circle. Held in by the Flyers. Shot by Hubbard right on the Bacher there. Save made by Defoe. And another quick shot right at the whistle from a tough angle there by, I believe that was Tchaikovsky, and the save made by Defoe. And that will do it for the first period. Four goals on the board for the Flyers. They lead 4-0. Shots are 25-3 in the Little Falls Flyers' favor. Last Thursday night in Wadena, Coach Kuchar mentioned in his post-game interview after Little Falls beat Wadena Deer Creek 11 to nothing, with even though Little Falls had a 5-0 lead after the first period, he said he was concerned that the Flyers were going to maybe lose a little focus. He had to remind them between the first and second period that they still had 34 minutes to play. He may have to do the same thing tonight. It was a fairly dominant performance for the Flyers in the first period. The North Stars really had no answer. They had difficulties getting it across the center red line. They're going to have to find a way, the North Stars, to do better in their own zone in period two. Let's take a break. When we come back, we will have our player profile of the night. We're going to be talking with the junior wearers, number nine, Gabe Hirsch. That coming up here in just a matter of moments. And once again, after one period of play, Little Falls 4, Prairie Center nothing. Just a reminder, you, you're watching Fire Hockey on Fire Media Productions, channel 181, and also on YouTube, and listening online at fallsradio.com, and of course, on the flagship of Fire Sports, Q92. Intermission number one interview with Gabe Hirsch in three, two, and one. Are you having joint pain, balance problems, difficulty walking, or recovering from surgery? My name is Elizabeth. I encourage you to come to the not-for-profit and governmental clients. Slender, Winter & Company in Albany, St. Cloud, Monticello, Maple Lake in their new location in Little Falls next to the dam. Providing high quality value, added professional service since 1964. At CHI St. Gabriel's Health, we're your hometown health care team. Our multi-specialty clinic is ready to assist with everyday needs for you and your family, no matter the age. From allergies and asthma to diabetes and heart disease. CHI St. Gabriel's Health Team is dedicated to your family's wellness. Friendly faces and expert care, all close to home. Now that's a winning combination. Schedule an appointment or wellness checkup today. CHI St. Gabriel's Health, better every day. Welcome back to intermission number one. We continue on with our player profile, continue on with the junior class, the guy that wears number nine, that being Gabe Hirsch. And Gabe, your third year at the varsity level, and uh, I know when I saw you a couple of years ago, uh, it was a, a challenge for you a little bit, but as the years have gone on, things have gotten better. Has the game definitely slowed down for you as you've gotten older? Uh, yeah, I feel like um, the game's definitely slowed down, and as getting used to the game, you speed up with it, so... Everything kind of goes the same speed. What did you do over the summer to get yourself ready for this year? So we have a weightlifting program that I went to every morning, and I had, we had summer hockey practices with the Little Falls team, so just that and weightlifting. You being obviously your third year as a starter, probably looked up to, I mean, I know you're not one of the official captains, but I'd have to say that you're one of the key players not only on the ice but also in the locker room. Do you feel like that is the case? I feel like uh, everyone looks up to everyone on this team. Um, no one's really in charge of everyone. Everyone has mutual respect and work hard for each other, and things fall into place. Coming into this season, uh, what were some of the goals the team had set for themselves this year? Well, our official goal was to get it to the MAC, but everyone has their own goals and pushing each other farther and maybe get a state and move on from there. 
How about for you, personally, for your third year at the varsity level, what goals did you had set for yourself? Um, just put my team in the best position uh, to move forward and advance as far as we can go. Looking at this season so far, are you surprised on where you guys are at right now with a 5-1-1 one, and one record? And then the second question is, already having 40 goals where last year you guys struggled to get goals. Um, yeah, goal scoring is a lot. A uh, big challenge for us lately, but this year we've really stepped up our game, and I feel like we could even move on and do better than what we've been doing. But we've all been working hard. So Those first uh, seven games, uh, weren't some of them were easy, but some of them were tricky too, and the Alexandria game comes to mind, I guess, with the loss here 3-1. to one. And the one thing that I noticed in that game was uh, the penalties, and that's probably one of the things that you guys need to work on throughout the season, isn't it? Uh, yeah, penalties is a big part of uh, our game right now. we got to stay out of the box and get um, on the power play so we can score more goals. This is a very emotional team. You guys get behind your buddies. I noticed that. And sometimes maybe the best of it gets to you sometimes. Is that maybe some of the reason for the penalties? I feel like our emotions get to us too much, and we just got to control ourselves and do what's best for the team and control ourselves and move on from the play. How tough is that, though, to control yourself sometime when you're out there? Oh, it's really hard seeing your teammate get hit like that or something like that. You just got to move on, and next play happens, and work hard, and maybe get a goal. You know, I've mentioned this a few times in this interview. You know, your third year, and you started as a freshman, and you have some freshmen and eighth grader that are coming up on this team this year. Have you been able to help them out and maybe, I guess, guide them through a little bit to kind of tell them what it was like when you are and not to worry about things so much? Oh, yeah. Right away you can tell they're like deer in headlights, but you get – used to it real fast when they hear Kuchar start talking and they respect everyone so it's a good group of kids. That's awesome. That's awesome to hear. Hey, last year we did some rapid fire questions. Remember those? Okay. Well, I got a few more here so I'm going to try to remember them. I didn't bring my sheet today but and I know you like eating food because uh, the Hershes like to eat food. I remember Riley liked to eat food and that too. So let's talk about favorite restaurant. If you had a go-to restaurant, what's your go-to restaurant? Go-to restaurant. Um... Oh, that's a tough one. In town, there's not many choices, yeah. usually. McDonald's or Taco Bell on the fly. So out of town. Out of town. Um, I don't know, Applebee's maybe. Okay. Love the chicken Alfredo. Okay. Chicken Alfredo, huh? Oh, yeah. I know you're a big pasta guy. I love pasta. I know, I know. I, I remember that from the last time we did the interview and that. Uh, how about if you could go anywhere in the world, if you could travel, Money wasn't an option, an issue, or whatever, I guess. And you can go wherever you'd want to go. Where would you want to go in the world? Uh, probably either Toronto or Los Angeles. Okay. Reason why? Well, I love Toronto sports, and Los Angeles sounds like a cool place to visit. Jamie Pettit didn't uh, tell you to say that, did he? Uh, no, he did not. Okay, because you know he's a huge Toronto Maple Leaf fan, right? Uh, I'm not much of a Maple Leaf oh. fan. Everyone else there, though. Oh. You should probably just saw his reaction right now when he heard that. I bet you he's just shaking his head like, what? Gabe, come on, right? I guess so. I don't know. I, it's just mostly Toronto in general. I love them. Well, you're a big baseball fan. I know that. And uh, I already asked this question to Dane Kuchar, and maybe he already spilled the beans. But in baseball, they have a walk-up song, you know. So what would your walk-up song be? Well, for SoBS, we have walk-up songs, and I had uh, nine by Drake because that was my number. Okay. Okay. That's, that's a clean version because he said Magic Stick from Little Kim. Oh. Do you remember that one? I do remember that one. Okay. That's not ja favorite. Yeah, Jamie actually uh, went home that night, listened to it, and was like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> is, that a right, is that the right reaction I should have had for that? That's pretty accurate for that song. Okay. I've never asked this question before, but I'm going to ask it to you, and I'm going to see if I can remember how to. If you had to compare yourself to an animal, okay, what animal would you compare yourself to and why? Um, I'd probably compare myself to a dog. Okay. I love dogs and the work ethic. Just keep going to do what's best for the team. Nice. Do you have uh, dogs at home? No, but my sister has a dog, and I feel like it's mine, so... Or she says, hey, I need somebody to take care of the dog. And that's me. So. And that's you. I got you. Yeah, a little brother does that, right? Of course. Hey, what is it to me, to, to you, what does it mean to be a flyer? Flyer is, uh, there's nothing greater than putting on that jersey and going out there in front of the home crowd and just skating for Coach Kutcher and the other coaching staff and for the team. And i got to ask, since we're in the holiday season, thankful. What are you thankful for the most? Oh, I'm thankful for the opportunity to get to play a sport I love. 
and my family, team, coaches, friends, everyone helped me along the way. A lot of season left here, but uh, what are some of the things we've talked about the penalties maybe to stay away? What's something else that you guys still need to work on here as the season goes along? Uh, definitely communication. Coach tells us every game, and once that starts clicking, then I don't think anyone's going to stop us. I don't know why this communication thing, because every time I talk to you guys, you guys communicate just fine with me, so hopefully you can transfer that over to the ice. Sound good? Uh, that sounds great, actually. Hey, good luck tonight. Good luck the rest of the year. All right, thank you. Once again, that's the guy that wears number nine. That is Gabe Hirsch. And thanks to Gabe Hirsch, and once again, thanks to the Flyers for uh, giving a few minutes of their time to answer some of my questions. And uh, Jamie Pettit was really excited when he said, Gabe said Toronto. Wow. And then all of a sudden, the mood just changed once he said, I really don't Boy, like the Maple Leafs. Had to cross Gabe off the list as a potential candidate for the Pizza Ranch <laughs> player of the game. Sorry, Gabe. Uh, it's the way it goes, but you know, just like on Saturday night when uh, Doble, when Mason Doble said that he'd like to go watch a hockey game in Toronto, and I said, well, he permanently has a place on the short list for the Pizza Ranch player of the game. It's, and he scored I, I a goal, be, too. I can be influenced. <laughs> and he scored a goal, can, and he, he still didn't he have it. He scored a goal the period after you I played the interview. I don't know. But uh, Gabe, Gabe's kind of soft-spoken like his mother, wouldn't you say? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, actually, he was very quick answer today, which was which was fine. But yeah, he was just right to the point. I think I caught him yeah. at, a, at a time when he was wanting to have the headphones on, and getting can, ready for the game. You know, you can tell he processes those questions and gives a good, thoughtful answer. And he does. Let's He's a good a, baseball player. Oh yeah, too. very good baseball player, and that's why he had a walk-up song already. Yes. So, which yeah. was that was an so easy that question. Didn't, that for didn't come as a surprise. That was an easy question. Hey, let's uh, take a look at our first period summary brought to you by Schlenner, Wenner and Company. Of course, the local CPA right here in Little Falls, and they have their new location by the dam. If you haven't been there yet, stop and say hi to Brian. Once again, and the staff there here at Schlenner, Wenner and Company in Little Falls, also offices across central Minnesota. And with a look at the first period stats, Jamie Pennant. The Little Falls Flyers are 5-1-1. One, and one. The Prairie Center North Stars are 1-2. and two. Both teams are from section 6A, after one period, the Little Falls Flyers lead the Prairie Center North Stars 4 to nothing. First goal of the game, it only took 15 seconds, and Reese Hubbard nets his third goal of the season with a single assist to Gabe Hirsch. Hubbard from Hirsch, 15 seconds into the first, third of the season for Hubbard, and it gave Little Falls a 1-0 lead. It was 2-0 Flyers at 7.37 of period one. Second goal of the season for Nolan Bjorgi. Single assist, Marshall Anez. Bjorgi from Anez, 737 of the first, 2 0, Little Falls. Marshall Anez took a shot from just inside the blue line. A nice redirect by Bjorgi, past Defoe into the North Stars net for that 2 0 flyer lead. At 1013 of the first, it was 3 0, Little Falls. Sixth goal of the season for Gabe Hirsch. First assist, Matt Philippi. Second assist, Gunnar Gustafson. Hirsch from Philippi and Gustafson. 10-13 of period one, three nothing. Little Falls. Final goal of the first with just 39 seconds remaining. Officially 16-21. Seventh goal of the season for Gunnar Gustafson. Single assist, Joe Majerly. Gustafson from Majerly at 16-21 of the first and the Little Falls Flyers took a four nothing lead into the first period. Intermission. No penalties in period one. A penalty free first period. Shots on goal. 25 for Little Falls, just three for Prairie Center. Junior Dane Kucher tending net for the Little Falls Flyers. He was three of three. It's the senior Isaiah Defoe in the North Stars net. He was 21 of 25. And again, no first period penalties. As a result, Neither the North Stars nor the Flyers had a power play. It's 4 nothing, Little Falls. And you mentioned no penalties, no power plays, but don't forget if the Flyers do go on the power play and score a power play goal, you can win some pizza from our friends at the Pizza Ranch in Little Falls. And all you'd have to do is call 632-2306. Be calling number 3. And he wins some pizza. And we've been giving away some pizza. And, of course, the power play is 40%, 40% coming in. 40%. 12 for 30. 40% leading the way. Robbie Kaczynski-Helgeson 
has five power play goals. That has not been an issue for the Little Falls Flyers this season. Their ability to score on the power play, and you look at the penalty kill, that is very respectable at 85%. I think anything 85% or better on the penalty kill, I think the coaching staff's going to be happy with that. Yeah, you, know, you got to wonder how Dane is feeling tonight because obviously he's only seen three shots and Defoe has seen 25. Sometimes it's tough to stay in a game like this when it's already a 4 nothing lead. Yep, you got to stay focused. You don't want to get distracted. You want to make sure that he's running through his goaltender routine, which, of course, he's been accustomed to for so long now. And this is his second year at the varsity level, and he has matured quickly. That he has. Dane Kutcher to my right and to my left. And Whoa. there's a clank of a pipe, well, and that was Fletcher. That only took seven seconds. And he clanked the elbow on the right side. Fletcher was looking for his six of the season. And uh, that one, uh, you probably heard it. It clanks some iron and goes out. Defoe to my left as we finish that statement. Just nine seconds in and an opportunity there for the North Stars. And an icing call coming up here against the Flyers 15 seconds in. Friday night, the Little Falls Flyers will host St. Paul Johnson. St. Paul Johnson, the most recent Let's Play Hockey Class A poll, their 10th in the state. They're undefeated. Last season, Little Falls and St. Paul Johnson played 1-0. St. Paul Johnson shut out Little Falls. A lot of penalties in that game. It if was you a rough right. physical game. It was. Uh, you, you and I had a chance to go down there uh, standing on top of the... What was it? I don't know if we're on some office or something overlooking <laughs> some piping or Was it the cleanest area we've ever been in? Yeah, it was like 200 yards away from seeing it. But still, it was a good contest. And, uh, you know, the Flyers, I think if they would have had a few less penalties, might have had an opportunity in that game. And, of course, that would have been the same thing about the Alexandria game here that was back here a couple weeks ago. We're going to have our first penalty of the game coming up. Yeah, Defoe got knocked over, and it was Stevens with the collision and Stevens is going to be ushered to the penalty box. Nick Stevens takes a quick look over to the bench to see if any of the coaches have displeasure, and I think Wesley Itashik uh, not necessarily happy with the call as he seemed kind of irritated by it, but uh, for our first power play of the game coming up, and for the power play, 25%, two of eight I have here for the North Stars. 33, Nick Stevens. Two-minute minor for interference. Just 42 seconds into the second period. The North Stars, they're down four, but they have a power play. Eli Fletcher has got two power play goals. He's the lone guy with power play goals this year so far. And they start, the North Stars do the power play without Fletcher. Yep, they have their second unit out there, looks like, right now, as he was out there initially. And Dane Kuchar knocked his own net off, and so that'll draw a faceoff down in the flyer zone as we're uh, a minute 39 to go on the power play here for the North Stars, 15.56 to go in the second 4 nothing Flyers. Flyers will change personnel up front. They'll come with Bjorgi and Doble, and they have done a nice job on the penalty kill, Bjorgi and Doble, so far this season for the Little Falls Flyers. Faceoff in that left circle, and... As you mentioned, Bjorgi going to try to win it. He does. Gets it back to Hubbard, and Hubbard plays it down the length of the ice. Huge difference when you can win that faceoff, and then Hubbard just massages it down the length of the ice. Do you remember just a few years ago when the Flyers struggled just to get out of their zone? And now it seems like with that ease, they're doing that. And coming into today's game, 40 goals. You add four more. They got 44 goals now. Is this their eighth game of the season? And they're right on that pace to have about six a game and only giving up less than two. Uh, I like those odds every time if it happens. And the opponents are not getting many shots on goal. Prior to tonight's game, just 129 shots in seven games. And, of course, Prairie Center only has three shots on goal tonight. Might get one there officially. I don't know if they'll give them that. As coming in on that left-wing side that time there was Zolman. Back all the way down in the... Star zone, they'll play it out to center ice. They're on the power play still for another 40 seconds. And the Flyers have to touch up, Doble does, and then goes off to the bench for a, a substitution as I think that was Hayden Johnson that came out, well, Johnson well, there. Nick Stevens is in the penalty box for that two minute minor for interference and he is one of the better penalty killers for the Little Falls Flyers. They like to pair him up with Gabe Hirsch. Here's Gabe Hirsch down there right now. And he'll try to go around the boards with it. Gets it over to Hayden Johnson. Johnson plays it back to Maturely at center. 
And he'll play it now over to Hayden Johnson, who kind of dangerously passes over to Hubbard. Hubbard moves it ahead. It's at neutral. Trying to whack it in there is Bick. Penalty time has expired. And that was a very quick power play for the North Stars, which didn't come up with anything. Not even a shot on net. Here's a chance now towards the netminder, Dane Kucher. Got a stick out there, makes the save. That's his first save of this period, fourth of the game. Back the other way comes Doble. Doble filling in, quick shot taken there, knocked down in front there by the Stars, and they'll clear it back out to center runs. This is Hubbard now with it on the right wing. Intercepted there by Bick. Bick will dump it back down into the flyer zone. Kucher leaves it on the end wall there for Majerly. 13.40 to go here in the second. 4-0 Flyers. Out at center. Here comes Bjorgi. Head of steam. Puts on the brakes in the left circle. Passes in the slot. Backhand attempt there. That was by Majerly as he was filling in from the right point. Shot never reached the net as it hit a North Star in front. Back to the point now. Colton Johnson on with a shot. Save made there. A little give and go, double to Johnson on net. Defoe makes the save, and the puck's still loose. Trying to dig at it that time there was Bjorgi. Bjorgi has in the corner, tries to pass it back to the point, held in here by Colton Johnson. Colton Johnson got it down to Bjorgi behind the net. Now it's taken here by Hirsch. Hirsch centers it right towards the net, and it goes off of the skate of Defoe and into the net as Gabe Hirsch was behind the goal line extended. That's exactly what you want to do from that position. Try to throw it towards the net. It catches the skate of Defoe and deflects into the North Star net. Good play by Hirsch, just trying to throw it out front, see if he could get something going. And he gets a break. It goes off Defoe's skate into the net. Goal number two for Hirsch And tonight. he got it after the interview. He did. So yep. one before, one after. He's bookmarking it. He's doing bookends. The magic microphone of James Hirsch. No, it's not me. It's these guys. So a 5-0 score now. Two goals for Gabe Hirsch. I think that'll be, I don't know if there'll be an unassisted goal, if they'll give an assist on that. We'll see. Gabe Hirsch with an assist to number 17, Colton Johnson. So Hirsch, Johnson. So Johnson will get the assist for Colton, his first assist of the season. So it was 4-0 Little Falls. Prairie Center had a power play. Flyers did a good job of extinguishing that North Star man advantage and they come back and Hirsch gets one from beyond the goal line extended off Defoe's skate into the net. George Moore with it back in his own end. Moore right wing side. Moore now comes across the blue line taken out of the play there by a North Star player and one of the officials. Now played up along the line. This is Hudson Phillippe with it. The fourth line is out there now. Holton Johnson working a little harder down low. Now it's Philippi, that's Matt Philippi with it. Matt now gets it to Cousin Hudson, and the shot is made, and the save there by Defoe. Well, Matt Philippi got the hard hat from the coaching staff after Saturday's 6-1 win over Fergus Falls for the hardest worker for the Flyers on that road trip to the uh, home of the Fergus Falls Otters. Matt Phillippe makes the pass out front to Hudson Phillippe. Hudson Phillippe unleashed one from there and Defoe made the save. Score update of the Wild, 2-0 Anaheim, 14-1 to the shots after Ooh. the first period. That game's at the XL Energy Center tonight. The Wild have turned the corner, but uh, that's an ugly first period. Sartell and River Lakes are 1-1 one, one after one. They finally posted the sheet after one period from Sartell. That is a critical Section 6A game tonight. Sartell, River Lakes, 1-1 one, one after one. Yeah, coming up in intermission number two, we'll have a chance to talk about some of the games around the area going on and kind of talk about the week of hockey that's coming up too. And also we'll talk about Section 6A a little bit as the... Uh, Weekly report has come out by Jamie Pettit here uh, on a Monday night. And here we are on Tuesday night now, and a uh, wind chill advisory, but uh, oh. nice and cool in here. Not, uh, at least no wind. No, no wind. No wind. Except for the wind blows by these guys every so often when they go back and forth. We're down to 11 minutes to go in the second. Five nothing is our score. Little Falls leads, a couple goals scored by Gabe Hirsch. The latest one came up here. Here's a giveaway and fanning on an opportunity that at that time was Brady Klein. I mean, they just gave it to Klein between the circles and he fanned on it. Back the other way, Gunnar Gustafson shot on that. Defoe makes the save. And that is the 32nd shot, Jamie, that Defoe has faced here in the game and we've only played just a little over, not even 24 minutes well, yet. Haven't hit the halfway point yet. 
Prairie Center with 20 on the varsity roster this year. Two aren't dressed tonight, so they go with 18. They do not have enough for junior varsity this year. So the number's down a little bit for Prairie Center, but uh, Coach Wehrman told me before the game that the numbers at the Bantam, Peewee, and Squirt level aren't too bad. Hubbard at center, gets it over maturely, dumps it in. Back there first this time is Jacob Zolman. Trying to clear it out to center ice here, and it's intercepted by Stevens. He's always around the net. Takes a whack at it, shoots, scores. And I don't know if Stevens got that or if it was actually I tipped it, in front by Hirsch. I think Hirsch is going to have the hat trick. We'll see if we get any hats on the ice, but it sure looked like Gabe Hirsch celebrated such that he had a hat trick. I think it will be Hirsch. Stevens took the first shot, save was made. Stevens got another shot, and then it popped out to Gabe Hirsch. And Hirsch buried the biscuit for his first hat trick of the season. Time of the goal, 6.47 of period two. Here's now Doble coming Ball's across the line. Number nine with the hat trick, Gabe Hirsch with an assist from number 33, Nicholas Stevens. So Stevens will get credit for the assist. Hirsch, the goal is third of the game. And that little give and go there as that was Kaczynski Halgeson trying to get it to Doble. Now Kaczynski Halgeson shot on that save made. Doble with a nice move and he scores as Mason Doble was diving to his backhand. He beats Defoe and it's seven nothing Flyers. Just 33 seconds after Hirsch made it six nothing. Doble adds the seventh of the night for the Little Falls Flyers. His second of the season, a nice diving goal to beat Defoe and Little Falls has 34 shots on the board. They have a six, seven nothing lead. That's back to back goals now for Doble in as many nights. So he had that goal scored against Fergus Falls, the first of the year, now second one here. And it's seven nothing Flyers. Falls, number 28, Mason Doble with an assist to number 24, Robbie Kaczynski Helgeson. Time of the so Kaczynski Helgeson getting in on the score column. Here's now Tchaikovsky, plays it over to Hudson Phillippe, intercepted there, back to the point. Quick shot taken there by Moore, and Defoe has to save that one as his 35th shot by the Flyers already. And still 9.08 to go here in the second and a 7-0 lead for Little Falls. Play to the line, not out yet, and now the Stars will get it out to center ice. Tchaikovsky takes his man out. Played over an open wing here, it'll be picked up quickly. And falling down there that time as it was picked up by Carter Olthau. Gets it over to Tchaikovsky, plays it in a little deeper. Now Moore trying to pick it off the line. He got hit there high, play continues on as he got hit there by Ethan Hoffman. And sometimes when you get a game that starts to get out of hand, you start seeing some of those you know, penalties maybe you wouldn't normally have, and it's just certain to get some chippiness in the game. And here's an icing call coming up here in the North Stars. With 8.26 to go in the second and a 7-0 lead for the Flyers. We've crossed the halfway point of this second period. Three second period goals for Little Falls, two for Gabe Hirsch, seventh and eighth of the season. Second goal of the year for Mason Doble. Just one penalty in the game. It was whistled against Little Falls, and the North Stars did not score on that power play. At that point, it was 4 0 Flyers. North Stars couldn't score on that man advantage, and the Flyers have ripped off three in a row since. Zolman comes across the line of the Flyers, dumps it in. In the corner, it's touched there by Ritter. And a quick shot taken there, that goes over the net. That was Lambrecht that took that shot from the left point for the Stars. Matthew Philippi picks it up, leaves it off for Inez. Philippi picks it up, here's a two on one with Gustafson. Philippi shot, what a snipe shot there, and he scores. It's eight nothing Flyers. Philippi just rips one from near the right faceoff dot that beats Defoe. Gustafson was driving hard down the left wing. He was an option for Philippi, but he instead decided to take the shot, beats Defoe, and it's 8 nothing. Little Falls. And for Matt Philippi, it's his third goal of the season. Time of the goal, 9.06 of the second. And as you mentioned, it's 8 nothing now, Flyers. And they're adding points. See who gets the assist on that goal by Philippi. 
Falls, number 27, Matt Philippi, with an assist to number 14, Marshall Inez. Philippi Inez. So Inez gets the assist, Philippi the goal, and it's an 8 nothing lead here for Little Falls. Hudson Philippi will play it out to center. Dumped at his own blue line. Intercepted oh. here's a breakaway for the defenseman maturely. And he oh. shoots right through the five hole. He did a little stick work, beat the foe, and he scores. An abundance of stick handling for Joel Majurly as he was able to tuck that underneath the pad of Defoe for a 9-0 Little Falls Flyer lead. Majurly steps up from his defensive position, picks one off at center ice, goes in on a breakaway, beats Defoe, and the Flyers. They have a commanding 9-0 lead. And now uh, more goals scored in this period. Number seven, Joe Majerly, an unassisted goal. Time of the goal, 9:40. Four goals in the first, five more here in the second. And we still have seven minutes to go here in period number two. And here's another chance. Doble has got the man beat. Shoots wow. high and just over the cage as the defense basically has gone away. There's a penalty going to be coming up here. And Kaczynski Halgesson's going to the box for an elbow, it looks like, as he took down Andrew Brick on the far side of the ice. Flyers and North Stars pile up on the fan side of the ice here at the Exchange Arena. Robbie Kaczynski Helgeson's been ushered into the penalty box. Second penalty of the game against the Little Falls Flyers. North Stars to the power play. Second time tonight they are 0 for 2. Oh, excuse me, 0 for 1 with the man advantage. You'd think that might slow down the Flyers but we've watched the Flyers on the penalty kill in that Fergus game and they actually were playing better when they were on the penalty kill. Yeah, Fergus Falls really struggled with that man advantage. Here's an opportunity now, Stevens, shorthanded. Stevens tried to slip it through that time. Good job there, picked up by Fletcher, and he'll play it out to center ice. Then moved ahead. This is going to be icing coming up here on the North Stars. It was 6.30 to go, and they're kind of in a heap of hurt right now. 9 nothing. they're trailing. Well, they came out early on in the second period. They took that quick shot that caught the crossbar, deflected into the safety netting, high above Dane Kuchar, but... After that, other than that power play opportunity, the Little Falls Flyers have had complete control, total domination here in the second. Still a minute 24, and they'll have to reface it off here. Say they didn't face it fairly as Buckaloo won the drop, pulled it to himself, and took the quick shot. One second went off the clock. 37 5 are the shots. And 9 nothing is the score. Four goals in the first, five more here in the second. Shot comes to the side of the net, and Defoe going to make the save. And it's only Defoe or uh, their other backup goaltender is the senior, and that uh, Neta Rosic. So, and Neta Rosic, I believe, has played very little. I think he had like six minutes or something. Yep, six he minutes. So he played in the uh, Northern Lakes game. 11-2, Prairie Center lost to Northern Lakes back on November 26th. So two senior goaltenders here for the Stars. Played around by Moore, cleared the length of the ice as they're trying to kill off still a minute 10 here as we're down to six minutes to go in the second and a nine nothing lead here for Little Falls. Buckaloo now, shorthanded. The Flyers do have two shorthanded goals this year. They'll dump it in a little deeper. Stars will play it out to neutral ice now. Just below us here, picked up by Buckaloo at his own blue line, and Buckaloo will send it back. That was played with a high stick there. That'll be canceled out once it's touched there by Hayden Johnson. Johnson trying to weave his way around Gould there. Gould takes the puck away, then Johnson takes it right back away from him. Trying to slide it in the slot. He does oh. backhand attempt by Gustafson, and a save made there by Defoe. Best save of the night by Defoe. Defoe scrambling to get up, and Gustafson will bring it back out to center ice. 25 seconds left still on the power play for the Stars, but it looks like the Flyers are the ones on the power play, and they're a man down. Puck played back in deep to the Flyer zone. Five minutes to go here in the second. Ten seconds left on the power play. Outlet pass is intercepted at neutral. Picked up by Philippi. Here comes the sniper in left wing side. Nice little nifty move. Shot score. Got him short side. Matt Philippi just darts in down the left wing boards. Cut to the net. Philippi is a left-handed shot, 
and beat Defoe short side, 10th of the night for Little Falls. It's a shorthanded goal. And for that goal, his second of the game, fourth of his career, and that's his, excuse me, fourth of the season, his 12th of his career, and his second shorthanded goal of the career, first of the season. 12.08 of period two, a shorthanded goal. Compliments of Matt Philippi. Fires full strength. Fires are full strength. Scoring to Little Falls. Number 27, Matt Philippi, with a shorthanded goal at 12.08. Unassisted goal, Philippi. Two goals for him now. Here's another shot there, and that was Carter Olthau looking for his second goal of the season. This one goes up on the dasher right on the bench there of the Flyers. Still controlled here by Hubbard, plays back out to neutral ice. Defoe seems like he was struggling a little bit net there on that last rush for Little Falls, trying to collect himself as he rests on the top of the net. Well, he's seen 38 pucks his way and has given up 10 goals. Play behind, just below us here, picked up by Maturely. Gets it over to Hubbard, right wing side. Hubbard, nice little move. Backhand attempt, oh. he scores! Wow! Backhand attempt! That's where Grandma puts the cookies. Reese Hubbard finds the top of the net with a quick, quick, clever backhand. 11-0 Flyers. Second of the night for Hubbard. Time of the goal, 13.07. And it's now 11 to nothing, and now there's a quick huddle around uh, Wesley Witashik here. All the players coming over and having a quick talk there, and I'm sure what Wesley's saying, but still 3.53 to go, and we will be in running time in the third period, that's for sure. Here's Hubbard, or check that, that's actually uh, Doble with it. Doble right side. Number seven, Joe Majurli. Time of the goal, 13.07. So Majurli will get an assist on that goal. And it is now 11-0. Picked up here now. This is Morrison. Morrison gets it over to, oh, no, that is Doble. Now to Inez, shot on net, save made there by Defoe. That's the 40th flyer shot. Still 3.20 to go. and. 29 saves for Isaiah Defoe. Yeah, he looks like he's just gassed Defoe right now. Yeah, this is the last couple minutes. He's having a tough time getting back up on his skates. That 11th goal for Little Falls at 13.07 of the second period. Fourth of the season for Reese Hubbard. Single assist, Joel Majerly. Nice diagonal pass from Majerly to Hubbard. Klein Oops, coming in penalty. and Klein pulled down by Morrison. And Morrison will go to the box. Third penalty of the night against the Flyers. Morrison had him all wrapped up, tugged him down to the ice, and Tower Morrison will be sent to the penalty box. Two-minute minor, most likely for holding. Yep, that'll be the call. North Star power play, third of the night. They're 0 for 2 with the man advantage. That last North Star power play, Little Falls scored shorthanded from the stick of Matt Philippi. Time of the penalty, 13.51 of the second. 3.09 to go here in the second, and it's all Flyers in this one. They lead 11 to nothing. And we still have three minutes to go here in the second, and then a full 17 third. And we'll be in running time then. Third power play opportunity here for the North Stars. They're 0 for 2, as Jamie mentioned. Flyers still looking for their first power play. And 11 even strength goals tonight for the Flyers. That's very impressive. Here now, this is Fletcher dancing around. Gets it back over to Zolman. Zolman now shot tipped in front. Backhand attempt. Ooh. That one just wide on the doorstep there was Brady Swanson. Eli Fletcher plays it high off the glass. Glove down on the far side. Back over to Zolman. Zolman now in the right circle. Back now to oh. Fletcher one timer. <laughs> getting a piece of that one was Dane Kucher. Uh. You could hear that up here as Kucher made a huge save off the one-time blast from Fletcher. Here's a chance that time by Bjorgi, and Defoe just got a piece of that one. Here's Fletcher once again, trying to set up at the left point. Had his pocket picked there nicely by Nolan Bjorgi, and it's played back out to center, and this is Gould with it. Plays it over to Fletcher. Fletcher now going to dump it in. Man, he's got a rocket, doesn't he? <laughs> Unbelievable. He's not that tall. No, either. maybe that's because he's so low to the ground there. He's got a solid shot. 
Just remember watching him play youth hockey. Do you remember? He would uh, just rip these slap shots from all over the ice. Well, you remember when uh, Fergus Falls had their one player that always had rippers too. Uh, quick shot oh, was taken Tostin there. Tostin Mann. Tostin Mann. Yes. You remember him? I mean, he would like load things yep. up and everybody would like clear out of the way. Minute 30 to go here in the second as the puck has left the ice surface in the safety netting. 11-0 our score, Flyers lead. You're going to be a busy, busy summary in the second period. Yes, we have seven Are you running goals. out of room? you got two spots we got left. a couple slots left. I have extra, I have extra sheets with if necessary. <laughs> extra slots. An addendum. Still five seconds left here on the power play for the North Stars. This was a little bit better power Ooh. play until that giveaway and a oh. shot. And was that a goal or a save? Nope. It's, it's a goal. Defoe got. No, I think Defoe has yeah, it. He's got it. Yes, he nice does. Nice save by yeah. Defoe as Hayden Johnson was looking for the goal. Boy, Defoe is really struggling right now just to get up. Hayden Johnson almost had one late in that North Star power play, but Defoe made the glove save as Hayden jo Johnson was in close to the netminder. Joukowsky back now over to Hubbard. Now in a head little misdirection, but Defoe had to make the save there. In the corner now, bumped around there a little bit. That time is Carter Oldthout and played out to center ice it comes. Rink wide over on the right side, touched there by Klein. Gets it across the line, dumps it on the end wall, down to the flyer end. Phillippe couldn't get that Hudson, and now it's intercepted here, and here comes Oldthout. Oldthout out to center ice with it. He'll dump it in, chase after it. 30 seconds to go here in the second. An 11-0 lead for the Flyers. Trying to dig it out of there right now is Othal. Othal behind the Netminer Defoe, slides it out in the slot. Nobody home except for North Stars, and they play it out to center. Inez now, he'll play it over. Tries to get it to Joukowsky. Joukowsky plays it back now here to Hubbard. Hubbard moves it ahead on the right side to Othal. Othal on the right wing. Othal tried to slide it over to Tchaikovsky. Five seconds left to go. Tchaikovsky gets it in the corner. Bumped off the puck. And then down to the final two, one, and that'll do it. Second period comes to an end. And it's all Flyers. They lead 11-7 with seven goals here in period number two. It was 4-0 after one. Little Falls outscored Prairie Center 7-0 into the second period. 19 shots for Little Falls in period two, and seven got by default. It's a 11 nothing flyer lead. Shots are 44 to seven. The scoring summary is almost full on my sheet. It's an impressive two periods for Little Falls. So let's take a break, let's come back, let's get that scoring summary, and then we'll talk about some other scores around the area, and we'll also talk about the, the week of hockey in section 6A. After two periods of play here, our score, it is Little Falls 11, Prairie Center nothing. Once again, you're watching Fire Hockey here on Fire Media Productions, Channel 181 and YouTube, and also listening on fallsradio.com and Q92.
nose tackle sack celebrations are big too. But subbing in the third chair oval player to run the old fumble rooski with the game on the line? That's all kinds of big. Just like game day when you order from Pizza Ranch. Visit PizzaRanch.com all season for all kinds of big deals. Order online now at the Pizza Ranch in Little Falls. All right, hockey fans, welcome back once again here to the Exchange Arena where on your TV you see it's 11-0 as the Flyers leading Prairie Center. And, of course, on your radio, I'm telling you, it's 11-0 after two periods of play. Four goals in the first, seven more goals in the second period. And, Jamie, uh, yeah, it's uh, when the floodgates open, they just open. For those watching on Flyer Media Productions, after the period ended, the North Stars goal is in the east end of the rink tonight. The Little Falls Flyer goal in the second period was in the west end of the rink, so that meant Dane Kucher and Isaiah Defoe had to cross paths back to their respective benches at the end of the period. What a classy move by Little Falls Flyer goaltender Dane Kucher. He's a junior. He walked over, patted Defoe on the back, and tried to give him some encouragement. Obviously, he could see that it was a tough period for Defoe, and Kucher went over just to give him a little encouragement at the end of the second period. Nice move on Kucher's part. Yeah, and uh, you know, there's the, there's the sportsmanship coming into the game, even though it's an 11-0 game. And you know, head coach Tony Kucher and also Wesley Witashik were talking about, you know, hey, we don't want to sit here and, and like run up the score, but you also can't go into a shell and, and, and not play an offensive game either so I'm sure they had a few things maybe a few extra passes here and there work things around and and uh, in and we're probably in the third period here we'll be in running time we'll probably see some more of those third and fourth liners that are coming out for the Flyers more regularly than you would have the first and second ones all right you are going to be busy right now so I better let you start talking here uh, once again, our stats brought to you by Schlenner, Wenner, and Company. They've been in the area since 1964 with offices in Little Falls, Albany, St. Cloud, Monticello, and Maple Lake. And with that summary, here's Jamie Pettit. Little Falls, 5-1-1 one, one this season. The Prairie Center North Stars are 1-2. and two. It was 4 nothing Flyers after one period of play. First period goals for the Flyers from Hubbard, Bjorgi, Hirsch, and Gustafson. In the second... At 3.55, it was 5-0 Little Falls. Second goal of the game for Gabe Hirsch. His seventh of the season. Single assist to Colton Johnson. Hirsch from Colton Johnson, 3.55 of the second. 5-0 Little Falls. It was 6-0 Flyers at 6.47 of the second. Second of the period for Gabe Hirsch. His third of the game. It's the hat trick for the junior, Gabe Hirsch. At 6.47 in the second period with a single assist to Nicholas Stevens. And again, that gave the Flyers a 6-0 lead. 7-0 Little Falls at 7.20 in the second period. Second goal of the season for Mason Doble. Doble has goals in back-to-back -back games. Single assist, Robbie Kaczynski-Helgeson. 8-0 Little Falls at 9.06 of the second period. Third goal of the season for Matt Philippi with a single assist to Marshall Anez. 9-0 Flyers at 9.41 of period two. An unassisted goal for the junior defenseman Joe Majerly. And for Majerly, it was a breakaway goal, his fourth of the year. 10-0 Flyers at 12.08 of the second period. It's a shorthanded goal for Matt Philippi. Philippi's a freshman, his second of the game, fourth of the season, shorthanded. It gave the Flyers a 10-0 lead. Final goal of the second period, the 11th of the night for the Flyers at 13.07. Second of the game for the senior defenseman, Reese Hubbard, his fourth of the season, with a single assist to Joe Majerly. Hubbard caps off the scoring for the Flyers in the second period at 13.07 with an assist to Joe Majerly. Little Falls takes an 11-0 lead into the second period intermission. Shots on goal in period two. 19 for the Flyers, four for Prairie Center. Through two periods, Little Falls has a 44-7 shots on goal advantage. Dane Kucher tending net for the Little Falls Flyers tonight. Four of four in the second. Through two periods, Kucher seven of seven. 
Isaiah Defoe, senior goaltender for Prairie Center. In the second period, he was 12 of 19. Defoe, through two periods, 33 of 44. Three penalties whistled against Little Falls in the second period, and the North Stars were unsuccessful on the power play. 0 for 3, Little Falls did score a shorthanded goal, compliments of Matt Phillippe. It's all Flyers after two periods, 11 to nothing over Prairie Center. A win tonight for the Flyers. They go to 6-1-1. One one. A win tonight for head coach Tony Kucher, and it's win number 3 99. It clearly sets the stage for Friday night. St. Paul Johnson coming to town. I assume Johnson will beat River Falls tonight. They'll be undefeated at 5-0. They are ranked in the most recent Let's Play Hockey poll, Class A, number 10. And Coach Kucher would have the opportunity on Flyer Media Productions Friday night to win his 400th game behind the Little Falls Flyers bench. He would become the only the 26th coach in Minnesota State high school hockey history to win 400 games or more. And so Coach Kucher will have that opportunity on Friday night here at the Exchange Arena. And both of us selfishly hope that it does happen <laughs> Friday yeah. night because neither one of us can be at the game on Saturday. That's true, that is true. And uh, of course, uh, as you heard Jamie said, it will be on Flyer Media Productions, channel 181, and also on YouTube. And if you want to search on YouTube, it is LFCS, so the letters LFCS space TV. And that's how you can find it on YouTube, and of course, that's for our listeners listening on Q92 and FallsRadio.com. There will be no radio coverage. However, there will be the Flyer Media Productions, which can be seen on YouTube, which you can get anywhere in the world on that. So there is an opportunity to watch that game coming up on Friday. On November 23rd, Little Falls beat Virginia 9-2, to and Coach Kucher coached his 700th game that afternoon against the Virginia Mountain Iron Blue Devils. So 700 games coached earlier this year, and Friday night, Coach Kucher is in position to win game number 400. And of course, uh, in our interview in, against Alexandria, he had mentioned that he's got two more years this year, next year, then is gonna possibly retire. And then Jamie, uh, in the Wadena game, wanted to Ask that question again if that was a possibility, and he said, well, it is a possibility. He could always change his mind, but he's looking at maybe this year, next year, and then maybe hanging it up for the Flyers. We'll have to wait and see how it goes, and you just never know. But, uh, yeah, it's a, it's been a great, great run for head coach Tony Kucher as he's in his 27th year, and uh, it would be great to see him get that milestone on Friday night. Well, Kucher's first season was 1993-94. His first game was November 30th, 1993, a 7-1 loss to St. Cloud Cathedral. He gets his first win ever as the Little Falls Flyers head coach on December 3rd, 1993, 6-3 over Cambridge. He's come a long ways. I was a junior in college. That in, 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 90, in 93, 93 94. No, no. Well, let's see, I would have been a, Probably sophomore. a sophomore. Correct. Yeah. Sophomore at Bemidji State. There you go. Let's I don't know if I have come a long way since then. <laughs> <laughs> there was a slogan for that, but we're not going to uh, go with that okay. one. So, anyway. Uh, Section 6A, you put out a report every year and uh, every week, and uh, you do an awesome job with that, by the way. And I, you know. Okay. You can get all the stuff online and stuff, but you break it down so nicely for the coaches, the media, all that stuff. And but taking a look at uh, some of the stuff that uh, is coming up, uh, some big games uh, yet uh, this week. And, of course, even as you mentioned, games tonight, a big important game, River Lakes and Sartell, is that is a, a very important section game. Well, those are two teams that are competing for a top four position come Section 6A playoffs. Uh, those two are at Sartell tonight. The last score I had, it was 1-1 one, one after 1. And so River Lakes, a team the Little Falls Flyers are very familiar with. The Flyers' season has ended the last two years on Exchange Arena ice with losses to River, River Lakes in that quarterfinal round. Another very interesting game is not a conference game, but it, or a section game, but it's a non-section, non-conference game is on Thursday when East Grand Forks yeah. is at Alexandria. I looked at that, I thought, is that a typo? 
East Grand Forks driving all the way to Alexandria on a Friday, and they don't play, or excuse me, on a Thursday, Thursday yeah. and they don't play a game on Friday, so they're going to drive all the way to Alec and drive home after the game. That's got to be a solid three hours, yeah. I would think, from East Grand Forks to Alexandria. But East Grand Forks touted to be one of the top teams in Class A. Of course, the Alexandria Cardinals should be one of the top teams in Section 6A. Just two seasons ago, Alexandria runner-up in the Class A state championship game as they were beaten by Orno. little curiosity for me on Friday the 13th besides the Johnson Little Falls game Brainerd is at St. Cloud Cathedral I'm kind of curious to see how that game pans out. Yeah, St. Cloud Cathedral continues to get more and more difficult teams on their schedule they get a double A team in Brainerd and on then, Friday night. And then on Saturday, December 14th, of course, the Flyers are at home here at 3 o'clock against Mount West Tonka. Another game I'm kind of interested in seeing Sartell. They're traveling up to War Road and uh, playing a game up there. As War Road rudely introduced themselves to the defending Class A state champion, St. Cloud Cathedral, on home ice as War Road beat St. Cloud Cathedral 5-2. to two. I think that was a little bit of a surprise for quite a few people that Cathedral lost that road game at War Road. In other words, the Warriors are pretty good this year. So Section 8, you've got teams East Grand Forks, War Road, Little Falls has a 2-2 tie with Thief River Falls. Kitson Central's good. Kitson Central's good this year. They very well could be a top four team in Section 8A. Well, we have a goalie change for both teams. For the Flyers, Adam Bubba Funk, the state champ, two-time state champ for football for the Pioneers is in net. And then on the other side, well, we weren't sure if we were going to see, but uh, Neta Rosic is in net on the other side. Jack Neta Rosic in the net for the North Stars. And we are in running time, so that will uh, help things out a little bit. An 11-0 lead here as we start the third period. I believe this is Funk's first varsity minutes. He did not play for Little Falls last year at the varsity level. DJ Kicker played 16 minutes for Little Falls. So this is Funk's first varsity action for the Little Falls Flyers. And on Saturday, we saw him uh, pick up his first JV win of the season over Fergus Falls, where they won by a score of 8-3. to three. So uh, no pressure on Adam Bubba Funk to keep that uh, goose egg on the uh, other side. Here's a quick shot taken there, and a save made there by Netta Rosick. And they'll play back out to center ice now. This will be Fletcher. Fletcher bumped off the puck there by Buckaloo. And you got to believe these guys are going to be working extra hard out there, the Flyers, to, to help out Adam Funk here complete uh, this game. Dane Kuchar's night ends after 34 minutes, 7 of 7. Isaiah Defoe exits for the North Stars, 33 of 44. So the faceoff going to come outside the zone here. So looking at the, the section, uh, and we've talked about a little bit on our airwaves and the radio, but for our, our viewing audience, we haven't had a chance to talk about it this year. St. Cloud Cathedral, obviously the favorite coming in, but there are a lot of question marks kind of in the two, three, and four slot this year. And the Flyers, I think, this year legitimately can insert themselves into that question mark of being maybe a two, three, or a four. Well, preseason, I had them a three. I had Alexandria two and St. Cloud Cathedral one. Alexandria and Little Falls played earlier this year. It was a 3-1 win for the Cardinals here in Little Falls. The two teams will play again on February 4th. Little Falls has some key section games in January against River Lakes, Sartell, St. Cloud Cathedral. All three of those games are at home. Another meeting with the Fergus Falls Otters. So Little Falls is, is in position where they can kind of control their own destiny to see where they ultimately get seated. Backhand attempt there that time by Gustafson. Save was made there by Netta Rosick. Played around the boards here by the Stars. And we'll continue on with that conversation of Section 6A here. Stevens now, he'll play it in the corner. We're down to 14-13 to go here in the third. 11-0 our score. Flyers lead, four in the first, seven more in the second. And we are in running time here. Anytime you get a goal differential of six or more in the third period, it is running time until that gets uh, broken down at least inside of five. Then we'll stop the clock, but that would mean the right now they'd have to score five goals, I make that six goals to make it uh, a five goal differential. 
Behind the net, this is Gould with it. He'll send it all the way down the length of the ice. It'll come right on net to Adam Bubba Funk. That'll be his first shot and first varsity save. And the first save there for Funk. Out to center ice now, tipped ahead here. What and position does he play on the football team? Uh, he was a defensive back, and then he also does uh, do some running back position too, kind of coming in on kind of like a second and third string, but uh, uh, defensive back starting-wise for the Pioneers on that state championship team. And didn't play in 17, was on the team, but uh, had a big part of the 2019 Pierce Pioneers. There's another shot on net, another save by Funk. He will cover up and draw a whistle with 13.04 and counting. So looking at, uh, you know, the teams that maybe are of a little bit of a question mark, I, I guess we talked about the Flyers. We know Cathedral. You know, Alexander, we saw them. Well, you didn't see them, but I saw them, and they've had some players that were out that will come back or seniors, so I think they're going to do fine. The couple of teams that kind of make me kind of go, okay, how are they going to be this year is River Lakes, like we talked about, and Sartell. Those two teams kind of are question mark teams. Almost maybe are the, the bubble four or five teams right now going into this. Uh, this season, if you would if you would say that. Sartell had a couple senior goaltenders from last season that have graduated. We'll see who steps up in the net for them. They've used two goaltenders this year in Sigurdsson and Hulk. Uh, River Lakes, a team that has advanced to the Section 6A semifinals the last two years because they have beaten the Little Falls Flyers in the Section 6A quarterfinals. They draw from a deep roster. They have so many schools involved in that co-op. They have large rosters, and that definitely helps. But, you know, a couple of their top scorers from last year, Logan Stelmach and Griffin Dunnick, two players that the Flyers are very familiar with. That they are. Out at center ice again, another save by Funk there, as you were talking. He's got three saves already here in the third period. Down to 11.40 to go here in the third. Running time, 11-0 Flyers lead. And played out to neutralize. Dump back in. This is Gould. He'll play it over on the left wing side. Cleared out to center. Intercepted by Buckaloo. And Buckaloo will play it off the boards and then chase after it in the corner. Buckaloo trying to pick up that loose buck out of the corner. Get some help there from Hirsch. Hirsch now plays it as he... Head coach Tony Kucher kind of flipping up the lines a little bit here. He's got Chakowski out there now with Buckaloo and Hirsch. And now coming in here is Hirsch behind the nets. Tried to center a pass there to Chakowski. Now to the high slot. It's touched there by Moore. A little give and go to Baloo back to Moore who slips at the blue line. And here's a breakaway now coming in for Fletcher. Fletcher coming on net. Oh. Shoots. He scores. As he went upper shelf on Adam Funk. And that breaks the shutout, and it's now 11 to 1. On the, the miscue there, actually falling down, really was the defenseman, George Moore, and it gave a 2 on 0 the other way. Well, it was just a matter of time, and Fletcher gets loose, goes down on a breakaway, beats Funk, first goal of the night for Prairie Center, and for Fletcher, it's his sixth goal of the season. So 11 to one now, that will still keep it in running time here with 10.20 to go in the third. Prairie Center, number six, Eli Fletcher with an assist to number 25, Brazen Abers. Fletcher Abers. So Brazen Abers, the sophomore, I believe getting his first varsity point. And of course, as you mentioned, the sixth goal of the season for Fletcher is 27th of his career. And his career started last year as an eighth grader. So he's gonna Probably hit the 100-point club by sophomore year, you'd think. He's a talented player. Yeah. 9.45 to go in the third. So after those top five teams, then the, the next question mark is who gets to be the sixth team that avoids the play-in games when it comes to Section 6A. Since there are 10 teams, 7 plays 10, 8 plays 9, so the top six. Here's a 2 on 0 oh, backhand attempt, and Carter Olthout has his second of the season as Nick Stevens set them all up brilliantly on that one, and they put it by the netminder, Netarozic. Time of the goal, approximately 7.45 of the third period. Carter Olthout's second goal of the season. Nice assist from Nick Stevens. It's 12-1 Little Falls. Olthout scored against Wadena Deer Creek in the 11-0 win. He also had a penalty shot goal in the JV game against Fergus. Olthout scores again tonight. Here come the Flyers again. They shoot, they score! Hayden Johnson. 
number 33, Nicholas Stevens, and number seven, Joey Majerly. So Majerly and Stevens get assists on the goal by Othout, and now this time Hayden Johnson scores his second of the season, and it's now a 13 to one yep, score. 13 to one. Flyers score two goals about 30 seconds apart, and as you mentioned, Hayden Johnson's second of the season. I am officially out of room on the okay. scoring column. I was gonna say, Carl Rydeen, I think, is down there doing the PA announcing tonight. He's probably going, Where, where's uh, Kevin Sawada tonight when I need him? Because Kevin's uh, helping out this year. It was Doble from Hubbard, I believe. Yep, I think that's so what it said too. Hayden Johnson from Mason Doble and Reese Hubbard at 8.15 of the third period, 13 to one Little Falls. We've got a reliable correspondent that tells us River Lakes three, Sartell one. Okay. Not a final, but River Lakes three, Sartell one. That's good, because I'm not getting any cell reception out of uh, here. I wasn't either, and my text messages are coming in groups, and now my phone's almost dead. <laughs> So <laughs> I don't have my charger with either. It's so, in the car. Well, I might have a charger if you need I it. I might need to. I might need the charger up quick. Minute 24 left to go. Excuse me, 7.24 left to go. Shot, save, rebound, another save, another shot, another save. And finally, it is underneath the pad there of Netarosic as uh, he came in in relief of Isaiah Defoe, and he's given up two goals. Adam Funk came in relief of Dane Kuchar. He's given up one goals, and that shot there was the 50th shot taken for the Flyers. Three goals in the third period. Eli Fletcher, the only goal tonight for the Prairie Center North Stars, his sixth of the season, also scoring in the third period. Carter Othout and Hayden Johnson. Played back to the point now. This is Hubbard. Hubbard gets it back, give and go there with Othout. Othout back to Hubbard. Back to Carter Othout. Othout throws a shot towards the net. That was tipped just wide there by Hudson Phillippe. He's looking for his first goal. Tchaikovsky with a shot. That one just wide. Jake Tchaikovsky yet to score a varsity goal yet. Here's Othout with a shot on net. And a save made there by Netarosic. In talking to Coach Kucher last night, uh, getting the line combinations and a Visiting about a few other things. I know he's really looking forward to Friday night's game with St. Paul Johnson. It's not a game that you're necessarily going to remember in February when it comes time to seed, but I think it's going to be a good measuring stick to see where this Flyer team is about 10 o'clock Friday night after the Governors and Flyers go head to head. Yeah, buckle up. I think it's going to be a bumpy ride, is what I mean by that. And I don't mean by, you know, Score-wise, I think it's just going to be physical. It could I have think a lot of penalties. It could be a lot of penalties. We'll see how tight the officiating crew is. I thought you were going to say we'll see how tight how the plexiglass is here at Exchange <laughs> Arena, and hopefully we don't have to take any out. But boy, in that, and of course last year when we were at Phelan Arena, those are yeah. really low glass. If you remember that, really low glass. Boy, they packed them in there too. They did. That was a packed crowd on a Friday night. It was. Down to 5.20 to go here in the third. Back to the point it comes. Little give and go there. That was Moore trying to get to Othout. Othout and Moore still working together, and Othout got hit from behind. No penalties by the North Stars tonight, and the Flyers have had three. Back at center ice, Joukowsky gives it to Moore inside of five minutes to go, and 13 to one is our score. And Hudson Phillip, you race after it, and they'll say no icing. You still haven't answered my question yet. What was the question? The question was, okay, there's that sixth team oh. that'll get yeah, in. Fergus Falls. You think it'll be the yeah. Otters? Yeah, okay. it'll be Fergus Falls. All right. Yep, I'm fairly confident. Uh, the, they don't play many teams that would be projected to be seven through 10. I know Wadena Deer Creek has a shot at the Fergus Falls Otters. Uh, does Prairie Center play Fergus Falls? I'm looking at the Otters. Yes, they do. Uh, Fergus Falls goes to Prairie Center. So those are a couple opportunities for teams that would be projected in the bottom four to maybe bump off Fergus Falls. But I think the Otters will probably slide right in at six. Any word on Morris Benson, what they're yeah. like? Well, there are some people that have told me, you know, this is a group that played really well down at the youth level. And they've got Jack Riley and Zach Bruns 
two really good forwards. They've had some good goaltending early, so they've played well. They beat Red Lake Falls 7-2 to two over the weekend. Fourth penalty of the night for the Flyers. Jake Tchaikovsky goes into the box, and Eli Fletcher just took a shot, and Adam Funk got a save as he just got a piece of that one. So on the power play once again, here are the North Stars. Back out at center, gets through everyone. This will be back behind the netminder of the North Stars, Neta Rosic. North Stars are 0 for 3 on the power play. Little Falls does have a shorthanded goal back in the second period from Matt Philippi. The other question is Breckenridge Wapiton. I know they're 3 and 1, but they've got some, at least a, that one guy that can score. Yeah, Jace a lot. Jensen. Yeah. Yep, Jace Jensen, Isaac Woolers. So this section from top to bottom is uh, pretty solid. I mean, yes, you got the state champ at the top, and, you know, it starts tearing off a little bit. But still, I mean, uh, you look at some of the other sections across the state in Class A, and, uh, you know, you might have two or three teams, but after that it drops off tremendously. Not in this one. It's it's at least five, six deep, and you could even say that seven and eight seed could be uh, somebody that could come up with a stellar game. You just never know. Well, Fergus Falls is playing Brainerd tough tonight. Brainerd has a 3-1 lead over the Otters. Okay. 2.30 to go. I know the girls were playing at home tonight. Brainerd Little Falls taking on Fergus Falls. We'll try to get a score update of that in a final. That being played up at Essentia Health Sports Center. And for the girls, by the way, they are going to do a makeup game with the Minnetonka Skippers. And that game is actually going to be played right here at the Exchange Arena on January 9th. It'll be a 7-15 game. And that game is a, a, a huge game because if you, you look at the, uh, the skippers coming in, they're one of the top teams actually in girls hockey. In fact, uh, in the last poll, they were ranked third in the state. So they will be coming in here on the 9th of January. Actually, Mike Coral said, I was the only one that had ice time available. So they're going to do the game here, that makeup, which originally is supposed to be on the 30th of November. Of course, we had the snowstorm there, so Minnetonka didn't come up to Brainerd. So... That game will be here at the Exchange Arena coming up next month. Minute 30 left to go. Quick shot towards the net. Save there by Funk. That coming off the stick of Dominic Ritter. Ritter passes it back. Penalty time has expired. We're back to five on five hockey. A minute 20 to go on this one. And a 13 to one lead. North yeah. Stars are now 0 for 4 on the power play. Puck comes out to center ice here. Loose puck picked up there. and Good job there by Morrison. and. Uh, they say offsides here on Klein and the North Stars. And we're down under a minute to go here in the third. 52 shots for the Little Falls Flyers, 13 for Prairie Center. Earlier this year, Little Falls beat Crookston 7-3, and the Flyers had 60 shots on goal against the Pirates. Well, this year the Flyers have scored a lot of goals and had a lot of shots. Coming in, they had 40 goals in seven games, and they're sitting at 53 now in eight games. That's just shy of seven goals a game. Puck picked up here now by Tchaikovsky. Jake comes out to center ice. Moves it ahead, and then it's picked up by George Moore. Moore passes over to Hudson Phillippe. Phillippe with a quick shot towards the net. That one just wide of the netminder, Neta Rosic. Held in at the left point now by Colton Johnson. Tried to get it down to Hudson Phillippe. Phillippe in the left circle. Moving in now, here's Othal with a shot save made. Rebound loose. Four seconds left. That shot just goes wide. And that should do it. There's the horn. And it is a final. Little Falls, 13. Prairie Center, 1. And the Flyers go and mob their netminder, Adam Funk, who Gets his first varsity period in and did pretty well for this first uh, period here at the varsity level. 14 shots total for Prairie Center tonight. So in the third period of play, North Stars had seven shots on goal. Funk was six of seven. Let's take a break. We'll come back. We'll have the postgame show. Once again, your final score, Little Falls 13, Prairie Center 1. You're watching on Flyer Media Productions Channel 181 and also listening on Q92 and FallsRadio.com.
Jefferson County Attorney's Office on behalf of Stand Up For You Coalition and CHI St. Gabriel College. Whether you have been injured, suffer from chronic pain or illness, or are recovering from surgery, advanced physical therapy and little falls help you bring muscle function back so you can once again enjoy life to its fullest. Put your trust in the physical therapist with over 30 years of experience where comfort and care are the number one priorities. The therapy staff at Advanced Physical Therapy will work with your own doctor to develop the best plan of care that is individualized specifically for you. With an entire team working on your behalf, you can't go wrong when you choose Advanced Physical Therapy. All right, hockey fans, welcome back once again here to the Exchange Arena in Little Falls, your final score tonight. Little Falls 13, Prairie Center 1. And we're waiting for head coach Tony Kuchar. He's climbing the ladder as we speak, so we'll get a chance to talk with him. And Jamie, a nice uh, win here for the Flyers, and uh, they go now to 6-1-1. One, and, one. and uh, you know, games like this you sometimes always worry about, but uh, you, you really you took the worry out of it right away by scoring early and often. It really took advantage of the first few minutes of the first period, score 15 seconds in, and Coach Kuchar, you never looked back, did you? Nope, go ahead. I can keep one up. No, you're good. We got I'm it all sure. figured out. You'll be able to hear well, now. Okay. Yeah, uh, now you can yeah, hear. There we go. Just got to hit the right button. Yes. Little so. technical difficulty we here. Did. You did not have any technical difficulties <laughs> on the ice tonight. No, we uh, kind of moved the puck and we had a game plan. Kind of once the game got going, uh, we didn't want to dump the puck. We wanted to kind of work on our transition, work on our neutral zone. We, we had keys to... Uh, you know what we were doing out there and, and you know I've been on both sides of this uh, you right. know where you get pounded and doesn't do them any good doesn't do us any good so we designated kids to score we tried to get some of our younger kids to get a cup goals and we mixed them up with some of our older kids and it was kind of you know it was fun to see those kids uh, work hard and try to get goals you know, it is important, though, that you guys jumped out right away because you don't want to have a team like right. this have any chance to get into the game so you right. can at least get into the next game plan that you just mentioned. Absolutely. You, you know, we, we want to get out there, and, you know, we're not a bad team. So, we, uh, you know, we're starting to shoot the puck a little bit. The, the, I've seen that goalie stop 50, 60, 70 saves before. So, uh, you know, and we got to him right away, and and it was it was a good. It, I thought the refs did a nice job on trying to control it a little bit and make sure that they call some penalties in the third period of running time, and that's all kind of the the, the thing that you got to do. Right. So, and um, you know, I I know you know the coach for Suck Center, and and yep. he was appreciated that we kind of calmed down a little bit and stopped you know shooting at times, and it's hard to tell people to do that, but uh, you know, as long as we have a game plan and and things. Uh, um, stick to your game plan you can't tell them to completely stop right. and then somebody's going to get hurt or something like that so but yeah it was a, it was a good win for us we haven't played a lot of home games uh we got bubba funk in yep. uh, made, made made some nice saves out there yeah. unfortunately they got their best shooter come down and i think the puck was in the net before he moved he's good <laughs> he can, he's only a ninth grader boy yeah. can he shoot the puck he can shoot we told we told him do not allow him mm. to shoot the puck. And Dane said that one, I think, that it was, one the was one. That one was a rocket. Yeah, he said, wow. he said somebody was screening me, and I, I knew it was coming, but I, I didn't see it coming That right was up. a rocket. So, luckily it, luckily for post. Your defensemen are playing well. Yeah, they, they, you know, and we need something like that where they can move the puck a little bit. And, and uh, again, um, when they got the puck and they wanted to get it out to the neutral zone, we wanted our defense to be a little patient and wait till our guys came out of the zone and then kind of go back hard. So, and they started to, to do that. And, and um, you know, that's going to only help us um, in the future uh, with the uh, types of play that we have tonight. And a win is a win, and it's Absolutely. a section win. You're 3-0 and in the section, Very, and that's yeah. a good way to start the season. Well, you're 3-1 yeah, and and with, with the yeah. loss to Alexander, but three wins yeah. now in a row in the section yeah. gets you back into where you want to be. Absolutely. Those are important games. A must-win uh, for us uh, in the section, and uh, that uh, that is important when come down the stretch when uh, we're uh, talking about the section, talking about where we want to be and seeding, and, and these are the type of games that, uh, you know, hopefully, set plays them you know we can 
you know, we can look at the score or, or things like that. Penalty kill, pretty sharp tonight. They yeah. A shorthanded goal. Yeah. So it, uh, yeah, we have some, we, we, we try to use more than just two players like we have in the past. So that gives everybody a rest and, and uh, you know, it's fun. I mean, it's fun to score goals, no matter if you're winning, losing or whatever, whatever it is, uh, it's always important to, to have some fun and, and uh, you know, not at their expenses, expense, but uh, just to try to get out there and have some fun and, and get kids goals and, and uh, you know, hopefully nobody gets hurt and, and all that right. stuff. So. Last night you said you were looking forward to Friday night to play St. Paul Johnson. Tell us why. Well, I think that uh, is a big game for us, to kind of a measuring stick. They went up uh, and beat the Fervor the day after we played them and tied them 2-2. They beat them 3-0. And I've looked at some of their scores. They Their goaltender has uh, played very well this year. They're a ruck, uh, tough and you know they're a tough team. They're rugged, and they're yeah, yeah, they're, they're rugged. Yeah, and we had a good game against them last year. We yeah. lost one nothing. Their goalie was played very well, and and uh, it was a it was a good. I think Dane played very well. I think in the net for us, yeah. and they just happened to score one goal, and that was the. And then Mount West Tonka on Saturday. They're they're no slouch. They they beat us up uh, last year. Um, they were very strong in the in their systems, and they they did they did some things that I hadn't seen before. Um, out of a out of a team that we you know we play Central Minnesota, they had some things that uh, I really liked that they did. One of the lots of face off plays and and uh, it was almost I I know is, was a junior coach for a while. At, yeah. it, was, it was kind of a junior kind of a type of atmosphere with their team. So, um, but yeah, it was it was uh, it's going to be uh, two good games and we'll see how we we handle it. And I want us to play well. You, you, you can't control if you're going to win or lose, but, right. you know, there's all kinds of different circumstances, but we want to make sure that we come and, and we build because we only have a couple games left before the Christmas tournament. Some extra significance. Friday night, you're sitting on 399 career wins. There's only been okay. 25 coaches in the history of the state of Minnesota at the high school level, uh, hockey-wise, that have won 400 or more games, and you can join that club on Friday night. Okay, well, we need one more, so, yeah, okay. <laughs> and for selfish reasons, for myself and for Jamie, we'd like you to do it on Friday, because we're either one of us can be here on Saturday, so can you do that <laughs> okay. for us? yeah, we'll try that, so. <laughs> it's gonna be exclusively <laughs> on Flyer Media Productions. This is gonna yeah. be this seen gonna be, around the this world. This is around Tony. the world yeah. here, so. You know, you mentioned Johnson, and we and we had a chance. Jamie and I had a chance to watch them. They are a physical team, and yeah. you haven't really seen a lot of physical teams yet this year, no, have you? We have not. And even tonight, uh, we had some you know talk in the coaches' room that we we're not ch we're not checking too much tonight. We don't have to. We possess the puck right. so much. Um, so it'll is that be a concern that you well, haven't seen I, a team yet? Yeah, it's always. And then to see a, a really good physical team right. will uh, will be. Uh, you know what we see so it it'll be a good game yeah good measuring absolutely. stick for the season absolutely absolutely kind of see I, where you're at yeah. i mean yeah i mean both games i think you know you just keep and and you know we have we have had some friday saturday games right. i mean we've had quite a few so uh, it should be no stranger that we're going to play back-to-back -back games uh this weekend at so. least you don't have to take a long bus ride this time we don't we're at home we can sleep in our you know in our own beds on uh, thursday night and, and friday night so and um go from there and I know Mount West Tonka I think talking to Jamie last night they don't play on Friday night they play on Thursday so they're going to be fresh coming in and Johnson I don't think they probably play on no they uh, play River Falls tonight, yeah, tonight and then they don't play again until yeah. Friday so it'll be a good game our kids will be excited to play and, and we're looking forward to it great so, all right coach awesome we'll see you on Friday then yeah, thank you congratulations on win number uh, six of the season and 399 for you okay awesome thank you once again, that is the head hockey coach of the Little Falls Flyers. That is Tony Kucher. I think we can wrap up our television coverage on Flyer Media Production. And so let's invite our viewers to uh, come back and join us here on Friday night as uh, we've just kind of set the stage as head coach Tony Kucher looking for win number 400 as he doesn't want to talk about no, it No, he didn't want to say too much about it. I'm not surprised. But that's um, fine. But uh, we want you to come back on Flyer Media Productions, Channel 181, of course, on Charter, and then, of course, on YouTube. And once again, to search for that, just go to YouTube, type in the letters LFCS, 
and then a space TV. That'll pull up then the YouTube channel. Just click on that and boom, you will have that coverage for you. It, was, it will be up here and hopefully we can uh, bring home win number 400 for head coach Tony Kucher. It should be fun. You've got a St. Paul Johnson team that's going to be ranked at least in the top 10 in the most in the Class A poll that will be released on Wednesday night, yep. Thursday morning. I can't imagine that they're going to drop out of the top ten. You've got Little Falls that's probably going to move up the rankings. Eight games in, and they're 6-1-1, one, and one, and they've really turned it on here in the last week. They've scored a lot of goals. They played well in their own end. Dane Kuchar's playing well for Little Falls of tonight. Of course, you had a chance to see uh, Adam Bubba Funk. But uh, Friday night, uh, the intensity will be ratcheted up. Coach Kuchar's 27th season. He's coached more than 700 games. Can he get win number 400? He will get it. It's just a matter of when. But will it be Friday night? Absolutely. We'll see. So once again, for our viewers, thanks so much for listening. A special thanks to Behind the Scenes. To uh, It was a, a crew of two tonight. It was Mark Deal and Karen Warner that were in charge of the broadcast behind making us look good, sound good. Yep. So thanks to them, and they'll be back here on Friday. For our radio audience, we're still going to be on here. But once again, for Fly to Media Productions, for Jamie Penn and I'm James Searcy, make sure you join us on Friday night for more Flyer Hockey here on Fly to Media Productions. Until then, good night.